was just a teaser. Yeah. We didn't we didn't get into uh into microdosing. Microdosing. <laughs> <laughs> we did the benefits we, of psilocybin. We could talk about bike dosing. Hello, everybody. I'm Welcome here. to Guys in a Garage podcast. I am here with Jameson and JJ. This will be the first multi person episode. Good morning. It's going to be fun. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Instead of being at coffee in public. Yeah. So, in lieu of coffee, we're doing this today. It's, it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. They're going to mess us, I think. Probably, yeah. I'm on, a, I'm on a first name basis with those baristas. Are you really? Yeah. And well, I yeah, try to remember their names now. We're there every weekend, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Talking too loud and sharing our ideals <laughs> with uh, everybody there. Mm-hmm. We've had a couple of head turns, depending yeah. on the, the volume <laughs> of our conversation. I think we've I've seen a couple of adjacent tables going, what are those guys drinking? <laughs> I'm usually the one looking around like, okay, who's listening to us? <laughs> But but I, I don't often feel like anybody is unless we get like some lady that sits down right next to us. But did you but did you have the subsequent thought, thought that you know who's listening to us and are they a fed? Mm. I don't worry about the feds. I, I worry more about uh, well I'll just say it snowflakes oh. or you know um, you know ladies that sit down next to us and hear us talking about guy shit and. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we've had we've had some guys talk to us like turn around and you know, comment, but I think a lot of them too, are like, I'd like to have some of that, you know, I'd like to, I would like to think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't know if I've ever uh, been there when that happened. It's probably one of the, one of the ones that I missed. Well, think of uh, society in general, right? You go to the coffee shop and like how many groups of women do you see sitting around talking to coffee? Like what? Two, three. Some mm-hmm. of them are huge. Yeah. One time when, you know, during the summer hours. You're talking about the groups or the women? Yeah. The groups. <laughs> Both <laughs> the huge groups of huge women. I mean, there's a dozen or more like around a table outside, right? Yeah. So, I mean, they're all getting together and they, and a girl's night out, like guys night out never became a very popular fad. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I think men connecting with other men, is just being kind of neglected. Well, so. I, I disagree. I, I think guys night out, um, I think guys night out has always been traditionally more of a, a you know, kind of a bigger thing, but it's been. Commer- you know, ladies night out has been commercialized a lot more. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you've got ladies night at the bar and all of that stuff. So I think that's uh, just why you hear about it more. I don't, I don't think that yeah. uh, guys night is a thing. And maybe the fact that uh, they need an excuse to go out, whereas guys really don't. Well, I think the ladies night thing is like a marketing thing, right? You know mm-hmm. who the ladies are. Mm-hmm. Well, exactly. <laughs> then the, the guys come out too. The excuse for guys night out is because the ladies are out. Yes. Where are all the bachelorette parties, right? That's what they want to know. <laughs> Iron horse. Indeed. <laughs> That's where I've always run into them. Yeah. I haven't been there since I did like open mic with the drums. It's probably like. You did an open mic at Iron Horse? Yeah. My, my teacher, that was the first one I did. I was so nervous. But it was on drums when I was taking drum lessons. I forget that you did drums too. Yeah. Cause you, cause you do the bass, right? Yeah. I, I really like that. I haven't practiced the bass as much as I should. I got to figure out where that goes in the routine of the day. Mm-hmm. I still haven't found it. Cause, um, cause a lot of times I want to play it at night and of course everyone's asleep. Did you ever, uh, have you ever started in on the guitar at all? Yeah. That's learning curve is so steep. It's like. Yeah, I think there's Everest like, yeah, yeah, I like to take a picture of it, but I'm not going to start climbing because I know myself well enough to be like, that's going to be so hard. I've been, uh, I've been messing with the guitar since I was like five Mm. and I'm still like a campfire musician. I'm not, I'm not that good. You're hard on yourself, man. We've heard you, but we both heard you play. I think you're pretty good. You can, let's put it this way. I can play, I can learn songs and I can play them, Mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, when it comes to like songwriting and stuff, I've only, so the one that I played for you guys, that that's actually the second song I've ever written. No, third. And, and I'm not very good at it, you know? like, but that's something that's that a whole other level though. Yeah. yeah. It is a I whole mean, that's level. a whole nother level. Brady on the other hand, that guy, he is a, in my opinion, he is a phenomenal songwriter. Dude, I'm the guitar for me. I'm like right here. You, you guys are both. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's like trying to find time to, uh, yeah. Put it into your routine and, and just even getting 10 minutes a day for me. Uh, well, mm-hmm. like anything else, it takes time and practice, but it also does take some modicum of, uh, you know, just natural talent or natural ability. At yeah. least I, at least I think so. And my problem is that it just dexterity, you know, cause so when I started playing guitar, it was a, um, 
it was a nylon string guitar, just, you know, an older style that my mom had in college because she was in a music class and she was learning to play guitar and she never got very good at it. And she says the reason why was because she just didn't have the dexterity for it. She mm. couldn't, she couldn't move her fingers and stuff fast enough, you know, with her brain to just make everything work. Yeah. And so she never really went very far with it, but she still had the guitar. And one day we were cleaning out the attic and uh, we found it and I started playing with it. And then me and my brother were arguing about it. And my mom says, look, whichever one of you can learn how to play the damn thing, you can have it. Mm. <laughs> so nice. it ended up mine and that's how I started. But I kind of have the same thing. It's just, it's hard for me to like sing and play at the same time. It takes a lot of practice on something to be able to do it. Well, and, and I always think of, because I always have that in my head too, that, you know, my, my dexterity isn't, and I just, it, it's, it's not something that comes easy to me, but you know, you hear guys like Andy saying, Hey, mastery is all about just discipline and continued consistency, consistency and, and effort. And, and eventually you know, you'll, you'll get there some people faster than others, but it's one of those things where I have a, uh, the guitar that I have is a, is a 76 Martin. That was my grandfather's. Oh, nice. And so, uh, I just have this, uh, like desire to, cause he learned by ear and he played with all these famous people and he had a radio show and everything. And so it's like, I, w- I want to at least have some proficiency in it right. since I have the guitar, uh, and just knowing that he played it and, so it is definitely one of the things I've been working on. I've, I've practiced a few times this week, so, so I'll take you, that as a win. So when you, going back to, you said Andy, so like me, cause you refer to Andy often, like Dave might not know exactly what you're talking about. It's Andy for sellers right. that is on like the real AF podcast. Right. And oh I yeah. Think I th- yeah. Real as fuck. I, I, th- I think I listened to the one you're referring to and he mentions Michael Jordan, like Michael Jordan didn't get to be the best athlete of all time by just like inheriting talent. Like he had to work on it. Right. Right. So it's like what I've heard you play Dave on the guitar, like that to me, having dabbled in trying to play instruments, I can extrapolate or approximate the number of hours that you actually have had that guitar in your hand, right? Because it's like, you don't just sit down, grab that thing and like do what you did, right? You right. have to actually be working at it, right? Yeah, now, I, I try to play to, like a few minutes every day, at least 10 minutes. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, not so much anymore because I'm always so damn busy, but. Right, but you mentioned Brady. So Brady Campbell is, uh, his um, primary um, method of compensation, as my observation is, is an artist, right? So he's a photographer, so he's an artist. Right, So yeah. he's like right-brained all the time. Yeah. So for him to do like music as a hobby and to write songs, I mean, for me, I yeah, think it, like, it, it makes sense. He's way more exercise in that part of the brain. Like from what I understand, you you probably spend your days get your primary compensation using your left brain, very technical, more right. mathematical. So it's yep. like that, that that's would also explain the need for wanting to be like in your right brain and wanting to write songs and play music and play an instrument, right? Yeah, yeah. It's nice to activate that side and uh, you know just be able to mess around with just different parts of your brain and just I, I like to create. It's not my first um, what you know. Uh, uh, Oh man, it's not my one of my first talents, one of my best talents, but but your work, I enjoy it. But your work and dedication to it has you know proven helpful to you. I mean, it seems like a good you know way to access your brain for you. It's for Jameson. It's even like deeper, right? You have a human connection to an ancestor, yeah, right. So it's like this this instrument now has sentimental value. So it's like not only are you honoring your your ancestor, but you're like accessing that part of the brain that also like your primary mode of compensation is not really a lot of right brain. No, it's not. And that's, uh, you know, I think uh, when we talk about our conditioning and growing up and just the things that we were into and, and what we were doing, we just kind of stayed on that path and, and didn't kind of venture into the more of the, the right brain areas. And it's like a it's like a, um, a, a habit you have to create. Right. Mm-hmm. To, to, to kind of bring it back over to the other side. And, and, and I believe everybody has that ability. It's just a matter of discipline and absolutely and habit. Well, and, and well, it's also a part of like nurturing, right? So it's like, I think we're all born with this creative ability, right? Our brains are just this small developing things. They, what they, Rogan and the rest of them say that they don't fully develop to like your early twenties, right? This is what the scientists have proven. Right. So like as it's developing, if you got like a nurturing an environment where it's like, no, no, no math, 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 yep. put down the violin, math, 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 yeah. right? Then you're job, 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 tax, tax, taxes. Yeah. And that's what happens. And that's, and that's how we're all where we are yeah. essentially. Yeah. Right. So for us, it's even a podcast is a, a, a creative opportunity as an outlet, right? Yeah, absolutely. But for me, I think 
I don't have an ancestor. Well, my grandfather played the drums, but I never really saw him. Or, um, but uh, for me, it's the music is an opportunity for these glimpses, these flashes, like in meditation, like to connect with like the divine, to be in the flow state, mm -hmm. right? To to totally lose track of like time and space and be like, and it doesn't, ha I can't, I can't sustain it for a long period of time. It's almost like holding your breath, right? I can't do it that long. But when I'm playing music, like on the instruments, like, oh, there'll be occasions where it's like, whoa, you just lost track. Like you actually, you, you wanted to practice for like 15 minutes, you practiced for 30. Right. Like you lost track of time because you were so into like what you were doing. So that's the reason why I do it. Because most of the time I'm looking at the clock, like what's going, you know, you're working, you're just like, yeah. when, when am I done? Right. <laughs> that's profound in a couple of ways for me. One, like you said, it's, it's one of those activities like, you know, I consider like woodworking or uh, just the get your head out of it and you're not thinking about anything else. It's like, I'm focused like skiing or whatever, just something like, you know, if I, if I take my eye off the ball here, then it could be bad. So, um, it's, it's not only that, but when we, you know, take getting your head out of it, but, and, and being focused and, and present and centered. And, but the other thing is, especially with a musical instrument, it's like, you're not only putting out a vibration yourself, but you're creating another vibration, hopefully positive, right. Into the environment. Mm. Yeah. It's like smiling at someone else and they smile back, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're kind of talking about, uh, you know, what you put out into the world, you get back kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're putting something out positive, right? Cause someone, right. Had, someone at some point in line, you guys are in service industries has to take the blow of the negative, right? has to be the alchemist to change, <laughs> to change the energy. Yeah. Right. You're the barista, the place we usually go to and someone's yelling at you or throwing their coffee at you because they didn't like, like the order that you made. Like, what are you going to do? Like turn around to like your fellow employee and dump on them. Like, no, you have to eventually like smile at the next customer and be like, Oh yes, sir. Right? Yeah. But see, that's where I fail. That's why I, could, I couldn't do a uh, <laughs> service, service industry. Right? No. Because somebody who does that, I would just get right back in their face. Right. I, I have, I, I wouldn't say that I avoid conflict. I, I will try not to get into it, you know, but when it comes my way, I get right back in his face. Like I, I just, I have, I don't know, maybe, uh, for the, for the worst, I don't back down. <laughs> There's been many a time where I've stood up and I should have shut up. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was something interesting that our, um, my counselor was telling me the other day is, is the whole, I think he called it BZQ. So it must be an acronym. Yeah. BZQ is an acronym. I'm trying to remember what it was, but it was like, uh, there was something about zipping it and asking questions and not, uh, you know, basically breathing, breathe, mm. zip it and, uh, and, and ask questions in, instead of, uh, yeah. Instead of being triggered. Yeah. The problem is like, I need that something before the breathe because mm -hmm. usually the trigger is right before when I'm supposed to breathe, the trigger precipitates something else. Like Dave's talking about, like, you know, if the mm -hmm. trigger is some guy getting my face, then it's like, okay, yeah. if, if I'm, I'm triggered to respond, you know, I won't be able to keep that service job. Yeah. I'm glad you remembered it. Cause I tried to Google it and all that comes up is some stock in Brazil. Uh, yeah, BZK, <laughs> BZK, BZK, breathe, <laughs> zip it, yeah, and well, ask that, questions. That's one of the things that uh, we talked about in the men's group is like you know keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. how yeah. many how many years have I been married? And it's like okay, she starts up right, and it's like okay, this is a debate. Mm -hmm. Let's go to battle. She, well, she when she pauses, like I punch back, and it's like I don't even realize I'm losing. Right, right. But it's not only you know in in a relationship like that, but I mean really any relationship or or just. Um, pretty much anybody that you encounter when somebody gets, you know, quote unquote triggered and they're in emotional state, then there is really no rational thought. Mm -hmm. And the best thing you can do is to just kind of chillax, let the situation calm down. And then once that person or even yourself is in a better frame of mind and can actually think, then, you know, act on it, start asking questions, stock, stuff like that. Well, it's a fight or flight response. It is. Right? Yeah. When, and that's not necessarily healthy, right. especially if you're doing that all the time. Right. Right. But and it's in all of us. Right. It is we in all of us. It. And that's, that's our animal instinct. And, and there are other animals that, you know, in the realm that will do that, yeah. but that you can see immediately, like, like my dog gets, you know, triggered mm. or whatever. And, and, and then the next thing you know, she's shaken, right. Shakes it off back to normal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and you know, what people don't realize with, uh, anxiety, you know, especially people who have, uh, you know, issues with anxiety. Um, that's what that is, is that fight or flight response is just very high tuned and it's hard to control. And it's very difficult. So you get people who, 
I, I, uh, there's a comedian I've heard joke about how, you know, sitting on the couch and uh, for no reason, he just stinks bears. There's bears in here. Mm-hmm. Run for your fucking life. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I know it's just a ham sandwich. It's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, that's kind of how it is for no reason. You, you think stuff like that. Well, that's, yeah, that's that whole thing of not being present and just having that, the, yeah. the, you know, the anxiety is future, the depression is past. And, and I learned this and, and it made, makes total sense now, but this whole thing about breathing and like constricting your diaphragm and all of that, like it's actually like kind of pushing those, you know, the, cause your dopamine is made most of it, right. In your gut and just kind well, of a lot, a lot of things stem from your gut health, yeah. pushing it into I talked your about, bloodstream. Uh, and Tim. so the whole like meditation and breathing and everything is just like, duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the most famous, uh, new age authors, Eckhart Tolle mm-hmm. uh, said if, if the whole, everyone in the world took one conscious breath, like the world would be like completely different, but like most people don't even breathe consciously. That's what you reminded me of. Yeah. What Dave reminded me of is that you're treating another human being almost as if they're an animal, right? This animal, kind of, this yeah. animal's kind of like in their animal brain right Right. i can't remember the name of the author but they talked about the different parts of the brain one is like the primitives right that's the brain that we're all kind of animals are born with the ones that like allow for bodily function and fight or flight and survival and then it's the ambassadors right the higher cerebral cortex that we humans are like blessed with that's supposed to control the primitives Mm -hmm. it's like this is a primitive response you're anxious for a bear that doesn't exist like i'm going to overrule you because i'm the, the higher right i'm the ambassador to the rest of you and say there's no bear just a ham sandwich like you know relax your primitives are activated because you're acting like an animal you know yeah it would it, it's just uh, it's interesting to me I, I use that word a lot let's say it's i'm fascinated by um by anxiety in it in and of itself because i i have you know uh some issues with it here and there sometimes i have a little bit of social anxiety but mm-hmm. for me i look at it as there's nothing that can't be tamed so long as you push yourself to get out of your comfort zone. And that's not true about all. I don't want to discredit people who have a legitimate, you know, psychological problem because there is that too. There are some people who have, uh, you know, brain issues or whatever, you know, uh, accidents, brain damage stuff can cause issues that trauma, cannot be fixed. Yeah. Trauma. Abuse. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of things that can cause it that aren't just like, Oh, you know, the whole pick yourself up by your bootstraps, quit being a pussy kind of thing. Yeah. That, that is a real thing. But there's also a thing where a lot of anxiety I feel nowadays is caused because of poor diet, you know, health. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. No outside stimuli. You know, the, the people sitting around playing video games all day and not actually out in the world experiencing things, mm-hmm. not going and doing stuff. When you sit and you settle for so long with no outside stimulation. And, and you're not exposing yourself to these things that are out in the world and learning how to deal with them, then you're going to be in a shitty place where you happen to come upon something that, that will trigger that fight or flight when the rest of us would look at you and like, dude, what's your problem? It's a ham sandwich. Right. Or you're watching the news all day long and it's just right. so bad out there. Oh Everything yeah. It's just, yeah. 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 That's fucking one just of the worst ones. Washing your brain with these like, you know, electrical pulses, mm-hmm. believe, 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 mm-hmm. you know, we're telling mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, I was, we were, we're, um, we were watching Lone Star Law this morning. It's on Discovery Channel. It's it's like cops, but it's in Texas, and mm-hmm. it's a wild uh, fishing game wardens and stuff. Yeah, fun. They have like a whole bunch of them in different states now, and uh, the shows. And so the, the, they come across this guy who was on his jet skis out in the lake, and it was after sundown. And I guess you can't legally do that because jet skis don't have lights and all that. It's unsafe. Whatever. I get it. Um, and so they had told the guy to pack up his stuff and come back in and they were being cool with him. They were just going to let him pack his jet skis up and leave. And so then they go to talk to somebody else. And while they were talking to that other person, the guy jumped on one of the jet skis and went back out there. Mm -hmm. And then he came back and they were like, I thought I told you not to go back out there. And he was like, well, I was worried about my friend who's out there on a boat and I just wanted to tell them we were leaving. And so they ended up giving him a ticket because he didn't listen. He went back out. But when they're writing the ticket, you can tell this guy, he's getting really agitated. And he even told them, he's, he's like, I have anxiety. Like, just get out of my face, will you? And you could tell he's not trying to be a jerk and he's not, he's not trying to be aggressive with this officer, but the officer is like in his face and like trying to, 
I told you not to, and you need to listen. And the guy was like, no, you need to grow up and listen to me. Like, I'm trying to tell you, write me a ticket. I'm fine with that. Just get out of my face. Mm -hmm. And it, it almost turned into a thing, but it, it didn't. And I was just like, man, that's the kind of stuff where you need to, when you're, when you're talking to somebody like that, you need to take that into account and you do need to recognize it and, and just take a step back and you know, don't, don't be in their face mm-hmm. because there are a lot of people who have issues like that. Yeah. That sounds like an ego can, thing. We can go so <laughs> many, <laughs> to, can go, yeah. right? Yeah, Dave, yeah, Dave just brought us to a crossroad yeah. where we can go like, to, right? <laughs> which direction like, are we going to take this? Immediately. I'm thinking about the meme. Like, you know, when you get pulled over by a, a uh, yeah, I should have a, a cop on a, <laughs> when, you, when you get pulled over by a cop on a motorcycle for not wearing a seatbelt, you know, it's not about safety, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, 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 but to, but to stick with, but to stick with anxiety, we're like, I'm looking, your screen with uh, Rogan and Jordan Peterson. Rogan, oh, yeah. had, Rogan had one of, I mean, my favorite interviews. It was years ago. I'm sure it's now no longer exists on like a main platform with Dr. Kelly Brogan, who's a psychiatrist. Ba- she was based in Manhattan, and her whole mo was to get people off of psychiatric medications and change their diet, as you just said, right, and combine it with an, a good exercise regimen and meditation. And she was able to get people off of these psychiatric addictions and into a lifestyle and their actual symptoms improved, right? So a lot of times the psychiatric medication, she based it on a book. She said she got inspired by this book called um, Anatomy of an Epidemic by Robert Whitaker because it was, he was a journalist who said, if these medications work so well, how come every single year the number of prescriptions are keep going up and up, mm-hmm. right? So he investigated into it and found out like all these white papers with all these results saying they don't work or they're harmful, like all got suppressed, you know, all got cherry picked for the ones that seem to seem to work but it's like these people have anxiety it's like oh now i got like uh impotence okay here's another medication yep. now i got a rash oh here's some cream yeah exactly. so it's like it's like one farm one product leads to another so i really like her and she ended up on the list of the uh disinformation dozen when covid thing came out so it's so, a dirty dozen so if she no 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 not dirty she's like the people that of the on this list where they said you know they're spreading misinformation about covid oh, so okay. if she has a california license she's probably not going to have it for much longer yeah right yeah <laughs> well yeah we were just talking about that's one of their new laws uh, any any doctor that says basically anything that goes against what the cdc says about covid then they can and or will pull your license to practice. Yep. So, um, which is horseshit because then I, I think you said this once before is that if you're, if you go to a doctor down there, then you're not getting that doctor's medical professional opinion. You, you are only getting it. what the CDC is spewing out, which means you might as well just go to the CDC website and save yourself a copay. Well, it, it puts the doctors in a fascinating position too, because if you go and you say like, okay, I, give me the CDC information. Give me the packet insert information for this injection that you want to give me. And they open the package insert and guess what? The pages are blank. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. For you, real? you look at the Johnson and Johnson and for sure they've, they've proven that I'm not, I can't confirm that for Moderna and Pfizer, it's the same, but this doctor opened up the packet insert for Johnson and Johnson and all the pages are blank. You can open a packet insert for any other medication and it's just pages and pages of fine print of like chemical symbols. Side effects and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But there's absolutely none. So it's like you actually go to your physician and say like, what, you know, tell me what's in this or tell me like, you know, the risks and benefits of it. And what, what, what are they even referred on? Uh, let me like Google the latest Fauci interview. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, what, what are they going to do? Right. And then it's like, oh wait, that's not the latest. That's like, the, that's like two weeks old. He changed his mind. Right. Mass do work. It turns out, you know, are they, are they literally putting a blank insert in there? It, I'm sure you could look up some videos where they, they'll show you like, I don't know if it's on YouTube, but there, but there's people that have opened up the boxes and they've opened up the insert and there's the pages are blank. Would you even type in for that? I don't know, but, I don't know, but it just reminds me of that. The whole thing with with commercials now, I mean, I I cannot, I don't even encounter regular TV unless I'm on business and I'm in a hotel room and it's like, okay, I'm going to throw on the TV or, you know, um, and so, but you see it, it's just like so many pharmaceutical commercials. That's all it is. Right. And then it's ask your doctor and it's like, I I guess it would be blank package insert. Maybe that, or I don't know if, oh, there you go. Which one did you say? I think it was was? Johnson and Johnson was the one that I saw, but I don't know if I saw it on YouTube. Blank. Yeah. Blank inserts found inside the J and J vaccine boxes. There you go. So it's, I don't know if it was that exact one, but yeah, we'll see. It's someone's trying to, doesn't look very long. That's good. 
video it so that you'll believe me because, frankly... Is that playing in your headphones? Yeah. Okay. It sounds weird. So it's a, It looks like a pharmacist to me, but I'm not sure. It's a brand new, sealed, perfectly sealed, brand new box of the J&J vaccine. Here I'm going to. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it must be open. fun to see. All greens. And perfectly on top is this. Or she still works there now. Perfectly normal. Probably not. Well, if she's in California, she probably doesn't have a license anymore. Package yeah. insert. There's the package insert. It's still stuck together. Oh, yeah. It's all glued together. <laughs> a lot of safety and efficacy data. In fact, all of the normal information that we would find in a package insert, like the uh, ingredients, that would all be found right here in the yeah, package Yeah, look at insert. that. She's opening it because it's, it's folded up like a, like a road map. That's how they all are. Yeah. yeah. But it's... Because they cram them into a box because there's a ton of writing magic. on those things. Right. But it's just a giant white piece of paper. You might as well just yeah. hand that over to your kid to color on. So my point is, thing. let's say that she's the doctor. I go to Step that doctor, part. and I want to know information. Is that a QR code, though? For yeah. The, living that blank. Yeah. To pull it. Are you kidding me? So the question is then, what does that QR code go to, for one? And then two, if if you're going to put all the info online, then what was the point in wasting all that paper to have just a QR code? Because they know nobody reads them. Yeah. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody does read them. That's, that's another true. And the other thing that people don't read, because, you know, believe it or not, when you have like a quarter of a million dollars or more of debt to pay off for medical school, you don't really give a crap about the latest literature because you're not in academics, right? You're in an office trying to pay your office staff, trying to pay for the overhead and keep the lights on. So you're seeing what? Like six patients an hour? <laughs> you have like 10 minutes for each person? Tell me when yeah. you have time to sit down and analyze the literature. No, you basically look at the headline. Safe and effective. Oh, that's all I need to know. Yeah. Next person comes in. I'm, I, I'm worried. Like, it's safe and effective. That's all I know. And I'm covered because right. the CDC said so. You know, I have no I got, I got the backing of all the Liability, agencies. responsibility. Right. right. Exactly. Well, that's an interesting question. Because while the pharmaceutical companies don't have liability, at least not at this point for this product, uh, the people that mandated the vaccines might. So a judge will just like, well... You're not suing Pfizer, but you're suing like, you know, Business X because the CEO of Business X said that this is mandatory for you to work here. Mm -hmm. It's like, so now all of a sudden these intermediate people are fall guys. All of a sudden you got uh, Oliver North's everywhere. Like, yep. you know, you got to take the fall for this, mm -hmm. right? And so they're all business. They're like, what? Yeah. Like, we, 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 <laughs> we did what you said. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. The brilliant thing is that DeSantis is doing in a way, and I'm not saying I'm a DeSantis fan, but the way he weaseled, leave it to another lawyer to like weasel around this, is that we can sue you for false advertising because mm. you advertised right that the product is one thing mm -hmm. and now we have numbers saying that the product is something else so under false advertising laws they may have access to get to these companies so that's kind of interesting nice yeah um, yeah didn't didn't they get some kind of like a uh, uh the uh, pharmaceutical company, some kind of like a blanket immunity during all this. There, there's there's yeah. a docu documentary on that. 1986 is called The Act. You mean 1984? Yeah, close, <laughs> close. So Ronald, so Ronald Reagan, you know, for even the libertarian leaning who, who loved Reagan, Reagan signed the act because, I mean, the synopsis of the movie, it's done by Dr. Wakefield, who has been sounding the alarm about vaccines in general for just like decades. But everyone thought, you know, he's a quack and quack. So like all the media will tell you quack. So if you Google his name, it's just like quack, quackfield, right? Especially right. if you use Google. Right. So he made the movie. I still haven't seen it because at the time it was like you pay for it. But um, Andrew Wakefield. Yeah. yeah. So so he's the one who did the documentary. I, again, I haven't seen it. But in 1986, supposedly the pharmaceutical companies were losing their ass because there's so much liability. They're exposed to it all. They're like, look, if you want us to continue to be able to make medications, yeah. you need to give us some type of protection. So this so-called act gave them the protection. So now that they're. Now that they're protected, that's like, you know, why do we even have to put a package insert? We can have the package insert be blank. You don't need to know what's in it. You don't need to know the side effects. You just need to take it to keep your job and pay for your own lights to stay on. It gave them the protection so that they can't be sued. Now it's moved over to the what they call the vaccine court, the vaccine um, injury compensation program. Yes. Right. So every vaccine, every drug that you take 
has a surcharge on it that goes into the fund. <laughs> and basically when, when, if you have an injury, then you're not actually, you're not, uh, going up against the, the maker of that drug or vaccine. You're going against the government. Uh, and you're going and the government is government. taking that surcharge so that if they get sued, they have a, a fund the set aside court. that they're probably yes. robbing yeah. anyway. I mean, I right. don't have any proof of that, but no, and but it's <laughs> in the, in the actual people that, that come out, uh, you know, compensated in this is very, very minimal. Right. Well, right. You, you have to like reach such a high threshold, mm-hmm. right? There's still a judge and arbiter that's going to say like, oh yeah, you meet the threshold, you get this money. But the the truth is you, you don't have, you might not have any data on that. You have data on this, you pay taxes, right? So your taxes go to the pharmaceutical company, Jameson will represent, cause I know he'd love to, he's getting, <laughs> he's, he's getting your money to fund the research, to put out a product of which he has no liability. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're simultaneously funding the, the government, right, that will pay off any damages. Hmm. He's, not paying, he's not paying of the, any damages. The cost of doing business, you know, and <laughs> it's it's, yeah. it's it's like well, it's, it's just a it's a, it's a, a liability. It's like, just, oh, got another one. No, pay yeah. out another, you know, five hundred thousand, and let's move on. Right. Well, what's yeah? I mean, it's just like what's the joke meme? It's just like you know, taxes are what we pay to live in a civilized society. Mm-hmm. After the BLM Antifa stuff, it's like, uh, can I get my money back? Mm-hmm. Like, where's, yeah, right. where's, yeah. this, where's this? Where's the civilized society? Well, and I think that uh, last I saw, it was they'd paid since 1986 just over two billion dollars in in damages through the vaccine court, which is very hard to get right compensated through anyway, which is pretty substantial. And the fact that every one of these covid manufacturers of, of the vaccine have all been criminally charged with fraud, right? right? Felon, felony, char- felony charges against them. So it's it's like to not even be able to question a company that has that kind a of felon felony. Right. It's just like, right. Uh, if you were just curious, like, oh, I'm studying law, like who, which come, what's the name of the company that paid out the highest criminal fine in history? Oh, it's happens to be Pfizer <laughs> at $2.3 billion for like bribing doctors. Right? For real? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so, so it's like, oh, that's, you know what? Let me just roll up my sleeve and like get the injection from that company. With no questions asked. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, with no package insert. Yeah. Right. Yep. No idea. Well, it, Cause I got to keep my job. Right. So it's like the the pressure these poor people were under. And now they're just like, oh, yeah, that was that was probably I think I think that was one of the things that irked me absolutely the most was when they put it toward us to get the jab or, you know, you you could basically lose your livelihood. Yeah. Like, really? Mm -hmm. You're going to tell me that you care about people so much. Right. That you want us to protect ourselves and, and, and all of that. But you're going to tell me that if I don't get this thing that you're forcing me to get, then I'm going to lose my job and I'm going to end up on the fucking street. Well, and you see, wow, now. you really give a shit about people. Well, mm-hmm. I know now. And then look, do you see like what's going on in New York where they're having to hire those um, city workers back, the unvaccinated ones and paying them back pay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I did see something yeah. about that. Good. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. 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 They should have to pay for that. And then who suffers, right? The people that live in New York, right? It's right. like we right. were paying these people that didn't even work. Um, and that's great that they, they took a stand and everything, but c- right. can we have this all been prevented? You know? Well, I mean, that's, uh, yeah. that's one of those cases where I would be glad for my tax dollars to go to back pay to somebody who yeah. is like standing up for something they believe in. Yeah. Well, the, the, and, and really, I guess, I, I guess you could say either way, because I can't sit here and say that it's okay for them to stand up for what they believe in, but not the other end of it, I guess. Well, right. It's exactly as, is that I am, I would absolutely be 100% behind the people that stood their ground. I'm not doing it. And yeah, I mean, this is complete horseshit. I should definitely get compensated, get back pay, whatever. Yeah. But on the other side, it's like, couldn't this all been prevented? You know, couldn't we have, uh, saved the city so much more money and, and, and everything. The answer is yes. And of course that goes, that will dovetail nicely into anarchy. It would have been prevented if it was a private company yeah. that was like <laughs> running the show instead right. of a public thing. Because right. as we know, when everything's public, when they have a monopoly, it gets more expensive and the quality goes down. Right. That's been proven time and time again. Yep. If this was a private company, they wouldn't be doing it because mm-hmm. they would have had some other means. It's like, yeah, give me my, I would be one of these people like, give me my back pay. Thank you very much. I'm going to keep the job that I found when you fire me. Right. Like I'll take my back pay and someone else's like compensation, not you. I'm not going to back work for you because you're going to pull the same stunt again right. because you're the government. 
government right. and you have no self-awareness, you have no reflection, you have no capacity to learn. This is where AI might actually become in handy because if the government goes on AI, at least it might learn something, right? It might be able to improve. Government's never improving. Well, the That's thing is hilarious is that, is that you, you say that because me and me and Luke just talked about that. But if you believe that it's because of incompetence and they don't learn, then it's like, well, that's, a lot of it is planned. That's giving it, them the it, benefit of the it's, doubt. Well, it's, it's not, I don't know if it's so much the benefit of the doubt. It's like, it's made, it's, it's that way for a reason. It's intentional. Right? There, it's intentional. Right. I, right. It is absolutely intentional. I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt. It makes it sound like, oh, we should give them the benefit of the doubt. They didn't know. Yeah. Well, we, that's, that's coming bullshit. out. It's coming out that they knew, yeah. right? The data that was su- suppressed because again, they have no liability. Mm-hmm. So it's easy they're running to do the same. Now. The thing is, is that they're running the same play that they've run. They run the same play in 1918, you know, with the Spanish flu and all that with the mask wearing and all this other bullshit. Yeah. So it, it's in, well, in, we didn't have the internet back then. So no, <laughs> you actually went to jail if you didn't wear a mask back then. Which yeah, well, that's horseshit too. Yeah, well, yeah. That's what Sean Penn wants for those that haven't gotten the jab. Like he wants them jailed. So yeah, it's like what, what are you going to do? There's some people that are that are just like that, which is ironic to me because it's like oh, they're the ones first ones to yell bigotry, right? I it's love like Sean bit. Penn's acting. I think he's a great actor, but I think he's a fucking <laughs> moron. Same yeah. with Jim Carrey. That's how most of the the people are, and it's like, how do you, when do you distinguish like when they're not acting? Like, is this are you just right. acting another role for right. like attention? Like, you just made the headlines. I know you don't have a movie coming out, like, but you, now you're in the headlines for some statement that you made that, that sounds kind of stupid. Exactly. Right. It's hard to figure out if where they're being genuine or if they are at all. Yeah, it's it's funny that you brought up the AI thing with government because because me and Luke were just talking about that, and uh, he's a. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can say he's a big fan of AI, but so he was talking about how, you know, AI technology and maybe con- computer technology in general is advancing in, in quantum leaps, like every 12 seconds, mm-hmm. basically. And the way that AI computers and technology is right now, if you were to let an AI loose doing, you know, software development and stuff, which is what he does, it could get in five minutes done a year's worth of his work. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? And he's like, no, seriously, like it, it could do what I do like that. And so we, we got into a little bit of, you know, maybe using uh, AI technology in government to go over these ridiculous 4,000 page <laughs> bills that nobody can ever fucking read because for one, it's all in, in government legal jargon that no one understands, but mm-hmm. them, if they even understand it, which they don't. Yeah. And, and who's going to read that whole fucking thing because, in the two days or whatever, you know, 24 right. hours that they give them yeah. before right. they're supposed to vote on it. Right. It yeah. almost seems like they purposely wait every time until it, it the seem, deadline it is, is almost they up do. so yeah. that so that you don't have time to read it and they can just push it through. Cause somebody has got to read the headline of it and be like, yeah, I guess it sounds good. Sign it or no. To quote the former speaker of the house, we have to pass the bill to find out what's in it. Right. Which is fucking <clears throat> shit. Yeah. Why would you do that? Because you have a monopoly. That would be like shooting no, somebody in the face and then, well, is it going to kill him or not? Well, yeah, probably. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you this. If you, starting January 1st, 2023, your employer gave you a paycheck and they said, okay, you have to pay this amount of taxes, but I got good news for you. This new business just set up down the street. And instead of paying them to the federal government where you always have been, you have a chance to pay to this other business. Mm. Like, would you pay it to them? You'd be like, yeah, let's just see what finds out. Because every time I pay to this thing, they do nothing for me. Right. Right. And it keeps going up and up and the quality gets worse and worse. Right. So that when you don't have competition, yep. there's no, there's nothing to hold you accountable. You're not subject to market forces. Right. And when you have a monopoly on violence and, you know, all these, these other things that we would normally not, we wouldn't, we aren't able to do as part of common law as individuals, but we empower, which I don't know that this is even the case anymore, us empowering anybody, they've just kind of taken over and it's just, they do whatever they want. Right. Um, with impunity, with impunity. Right. And then it's like, are you in the club or not? Well, let me make a fake cryptocurrency FTT (laughs) under my thing, like FTX, Mm -hmm. borrow against it, bribe you off. And now we're going to find out is this, did this guy make the club or not? Right. Right. Because if he's in the club, he's not going to do any jail time. And if he's going to go against us or whatever, we'll just, you know, he'll just disappear. Yeah. He'll just be gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, my, my whole thing with the uh, using AI technology for the government was what I was getting at um, was that if you're going to use that, use it as long as it's used as a tool, you know, for that purpose and doesn't become a control, you know, and, and he made the argument of, well, 
we control computers. So did he not see Terminator two? <laughs> I brought Terminator <laughs> up a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> but but his argument was was so that even in AI technology, it's only running if and or statements. It's only ones and zeros. It can't necessarily do anything on its own unless we let it. And I, and so I made the argument of well. Right. But so what, you know, the, the three laws of robotics, you know, you can't hurt a human being and all that stuff, you know, like, uh, whatever they put into a RoboCop, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. It's like, okay, so we put that into them and, uh, you know, we, we kind of set them loose and AI technology now has the ability to learn on its own. Well, what does it learn from it? It learns from pretty much anything that we give it to learn from. So we teach it in some manner how to do the things that we want it to do. And it has this set of rules. Well, if it's able to learn, is there a way that it could figure out how to circumvent those rules that we give it on its own and basically create its own sentience? Because that's what human beings do. We have morals, we have laws, we have all these things that keep us, uh, you know, in line. And I mean, we decide all the time, like, eh, I don't like this guy. I'm going to fucking shoot him, you know, or whatever. Even though we know it's wrong, we still do stupid shit all the time. You know, I mean, what, what that, uh, that joke that... Um, some laws were meant to be bent and others are meant to be broken. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I worry about is, is it possible? I think that it's possible. And when it comes to this stuff, I, I'm not that smart about it. I don't know shit about AI really, but I think it's possible. And maybe I have watched Terminator too many times. But I think you got a lot of AI going on just in this room. It could, so so, so, so <laughs> but, but I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sell yourself short. But here's the, here's the other thing though, is when does that tool that we look upon to go through these 4,000 page bills and give us a yes or no and break it down into fine points of data that we can easily read. When does that become our now governing body? When we look at that as our master and say, well, let's just think of a bunch of stuff, put it on paper, feed it into a scanner, and then the robot God is going to tell us yes or no and what we should do. And that's what we follow. Because then that now is our controller and whoever controls the controller is our master, I, I, which guaranteed isn't going to be us. And it's probably not going to be our government at that point. It's going to be whoever was smart enough to hack into it and tell it what to tell us. Do the people in the government even actually control us? Well, they're, and, they're all sponsored by somebody. Right. They are. There's, CCP. there's, there's definitely the, <laughs> Klaus the families, the families, um, you the, know, the families. The thing is, is I haven't, I haven't, uh, well, yeah, going back to, you know, Roman times, right? I mean, this, every, we're, we're under control of Rome. Oh yeah. Pretty much. You know? So, but the thing is, uh, I have yet to hear any positive arguments for AI. I mean, I'd definitely be open to a conversation to hear a little bit more about it. I mean, I just see the things that, you know, DARPA is doing the whole thing about you'll never shoot a human, kill a human. Have you seen those attack I haven't right. robots well, and stuff like that? I mean, that's, that's insane to me. And as, mm -hmm. as an anarchist, dogs. It, it, I, the whole idea of AI pouring through a 4,000 page thing is like, I would, you could put the laws on one page, you right. know, it's just like, right. I, you well, know, if, I, if you had the controller for the AI, what you do is like, you know, hold up those 4,000 pages and put a match underneath it and burn right. the whole exactly. fucking thing. Yeah. Right? Exactly. That's, how, that's how you interpret yeah. those pages for, if you're right. my AI, right. exactly. But, yeah. but one of the things you, you just said, light Dave, a cigarette, stare at it, exactly. and set it on fire, throw yeah. it into the fire. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how we would control the AI. Yeah. But getting back to what you're saying, Davis, like you said, you know, morals, ethics, laws, one thing that you left out, which I think you're implying though, is like loopholes. Right. There's so, a, right. So there's there's so always the AI a loophole. Will find, the AI will find the loophole, right? It'll redefine human. Yeah. Or well, they'll be like, this is not a human. We yeah. were, as humans, we're I can kill these humans, but I can't kill these ones. Yeah. Exactly. And like this person's not a human because guess what? They're not employed. They're like homeless on the street. They're right. living in a tent. This does not meet my AI criteria for human. Terminate. Terminate. Clean up the streets. What was right? the thing in San Francisco where they're allowing AI to... Um, use force, right? Or robots, right? Yes. Robots use force they, in San Francisco. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, even in China, they're using AI all the time. They have all the facial recognition scanners mm -hmm. and everything else. Social credit system, their social credit uh, system yeah. is, you know, works a lot on their AI technology. It's ridiculous. Maybe I'm just old fashioned, but it's, I just, I, I, we definitely have had some uh, positive things come about technology and, and I don't know how much AI is involved in that, but it's, I feel like there comes to a point where 
we're just so focused on that kind of stuff and not like really focused on what we have already. It you sounds know? to me, yeah. Jameson, like what, you, what advances it, it, can we it, can we can we continue to do? It sounds you know? to me that you actually do enjoy the human experience, right? You do enjoy being human. <laughs> if I had you time, like, to, you like hiking, I'd love more time like to, to really experience like my body and the realm and all that. Right. But instead of this other bullshit that's like out, right beyond me that it doesn't really matter right well you know? it's it's the natural bane of human existence right we can't ever just be happy with what we have mm-hmm. we're always looking for something better and i think maybe that's possibly because we just get bored too easy and uh you know the monkeys always have to have something to play with yeah, yeah and if AI it's the same it's the same <clears throat> thing with uh you know gene therapy and all this uh you know technology that we have to you know they're trying to basically uh make it to where you can go in and custom order a baby you yeah. know so that something that will have, you know, be a, a great athlete and will never get sick and never have these specific diseases and all that stuff. You can guarantee that your kid is going to live to be 120 years old and all that. And I mean, maybe in some way that's great, but I mean, the basic statement is who the hell are we to play God? Well, and how right. long is it going to be before you can have a device here where you can print yourself off a cheeseburger? Oh, yeah. Probably you know, not very probably. long. Yeah. You know, yeah. from your computer. Yeah. yeah. You know, but that's the thing is, I, I mean, I personally, I enjoy the lottery of it all. Right. Exactly. You get what you get. Right. And you don't throw a fit. Right. You know? <laughs> and the whole idea of, of spending the time being intentional and, and, and making it, I mean, so many things have been taken off of our plate, which we consider progress. Right. Yeah. Whereas, but we're sitting in front of a computer screen. You sent me that meme the other day. It's like, how were your computer screens today? We're going to yeah. go and, and get yeah. on our other computer screens yeah. and I'll be on a screen while we're watching those other screens. And it's yeah. just like, I'll be on my little screen. So oh, we've, yeah. we're, we're sitting in a chair looking at screens and we've, we've supposedly taken all of these, you know, troublesome, you know, things we don't want to do, which is being in touch with the land and, <laughs> the realm and, and actually, uh, you know, growing our own stuff and, and, and really being intentional instead of relying on government and other people to do that for us. Just imagine a farmer be like, yeah, there's this couple, this yuppie couple, like from the city that they want to come out and and spend money and pay you to like, so they can sleep in your barn and like, look at the stars (laughs) and like maybe help you with your cows. And the farmer's like, are you out of your mind? I do this this every day. I have shit shit to do. I can't can't afford to deal with them. We were at, we were watching that show, uh, 1923 last night, Uh uh, episode three just recently came out and God, it, it just, it was amazing to me that they thought to put this in there. And so they go to town and they're, they're in Bozeman and they're walking through town and, and the guys and their wives. And there's this guy on the corner selling, um, electricity. And so they were all like, Oh wow, you're, you're bringing electricity in here. And he was like, yep, we'll even run the lines out to you. And, uh, and he was also, so he's standing there and they were like, well, what's this thing? And he goes, well, that's a washing machine. And they were like, what does it do? And he says, well, it washes clothes, so you don't have to. And they're like, well, what does this wash? And he goes, no, 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 that's a refrigerator. It freezes stuff in the top and keeps everything nice and cool in the bottom. And they go, well, how much is that? And he goes, well, we don't actually sell them. We rent them. And so the, the guy comes over and he's like, so you're telling me you sell the electricity and you rent the appliances that use it. And he's like, well, yeah. And he goes, well, then if I buy that from you, I'm just working for you. I'm not working for me no more. He's like, it doesn't make no damn sense. He's like, well, it makes everything a lot better. It makes life easier. And he's like, how does it make life easier? Cause now I got to work twice as hard to pay you to have that crap. Right. And yeah. I, was, I was like, that is fucking amazing. Yeah. It's mind blowing. Right. It's yeah. like, yeah. A commentary on modern society, mm-hmm. a commentary on 2023 from 1923, a hundred years ago. And if you look at a, a, I mean, things that I'm seeing lately now is, is a lot of the reason that we have depression is because mm-hmm. we're so comfortable. Oh, right. We yeah. just have so much comfort yep. that. We, we we have nothing to be here for because everything is taken care of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, I, I was, again, I was talking with Luke about, uh, this study by, uh, I think it's John Calhoun that he did in the yeah, started the, mice, the rats. Yep. The rat paradise. Yep. The rat paradise. It was on yeah. Dan Cummins podcast. It was, yeah, that shared. was on Dan Cummins. Yeah. yeah. But it's, a. Uh, um, so he, so it was like 30 years that he did these experiments and, and I already went over this before, but so was, I'll just kind of touch on it. Um, he, so he did several of them and it was like two to five years or something each that he did them. And basically he took all these, all these mice rats and made, tried to build this utopian society over and over and over again. And each time he did it, he gave them, he gave them everything they could possibly need, food, things to play on water. Everything was taken care of. They didn't have to do anything. And every time the experiment ended up the same way over time, they stopped breeding. They all turned 
uh, uh, violent against each other and destroyed themselves no matter what. Every single time it turned out the exact same way. Mm -hmm. And they've used this study f to, uh, um, to basically track our society and, and what we have come from and what we are becoming. They've kind of put it towards that. Yeah, and it, so. it was, I, I, I mentioned the comment that you said in our discord channel where you said, yeah, that's all great and grand, but I'm still not convinced that uh, people are as smart as mice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's definitely a correlation. I mean, it sounds so. Well, so, so then it, it, it leads to natural questions, doesn't it? So you, you will based on that, that ex, those experiments. And it's like, let me ask you, like, what's how's the world re, reproduction rate doing these days? Are we replacing the humans that are dying? Well, obviously not? it's falling because okay. Elon Musk is so worried about it and yeah. trying to create his own personal army and what's the crime rate if we go to turn violent against each other how's that doing is that dropping no okay so you have the numbers then of human beings that are mimicking rats how right. proud should we be exactly no wonder people want ai they want something more intelligent than the human right and and governments <laughs> and rat. countries and monarchies whatever they they rise and fall and you know just kind of the same way i mean i i heard something the other day that you know on the whole currency part mm -hmm. of it is that there are only for like the last since since our inception of our currency, the U.S., there's only one other currency that is as long as ours, and it's the British pound. Mm, yeah. yeah, the rest have all fiat currencies, right? Have coming all on. just come and gone. That's fascinating. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they're all fake. Yeah, they all fake. and <laughs> and as you can see, well, and ever since Nixon cut our dollars tie with uh, the gold, gold yeah. it's basically fucking not even worth the paper it's printed on. Right. Yeah, it becomes. It's just the idea in your head of what it's worth, and then they find these creative ways to make it worth even less. Hey, we're going to give you universal basic income. Mm -hmm. well, that's great. No, yeah. Well, why do they? Why does a dozen eggs cost a hundred bucks now? Yeah, let's I start the rat paradise now. Right. Talk about a band aid on a freaking like I've, head I've, wound or whatever. You know, it's like right. I've always said that about the universal basic if income. If you have thing. to it's a, come it's, to that, it's a nice idea, right? It's a nice idea to be able to help people, people who may be in a situation where they can't work for themselves, they can't, uh, you know, survive and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe they have some kind of mental instability issues. Right. They can't hold a job. That's cool. But why are we always looking for this ridiculous blanket? band-aid yeah. for everything instead of taking the time to treat things on a one-by-one -one basis and and look at them and compartmentalize them and say okay this person needs this kind of help this person needs this kind of help yep. this group of people needs this kind of help we're always just like no nah, let's pay everybody to sit at home and do nothing right? or let's just spend billions of dollars over to you know ukraine right. or whatever and uh, right of fixing yeah. our own exactly yeah. how, how much good could we have done here in our own fucking country mm -hmm especially with veterans it, it's by keeping that, what is it? $2.7 billion right here instead of sending it over there. And I'm not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't help them. Sure. But when we have so many issues here and we can't keep our own house in order, what fucking business do we have of trying to go and nail siding on someone else's? Well, I mean, I, I the money's just going over there to be laundered to give back to the people that sent it there. Well, yeah, more that's than likely. A, that's, that's pretty much all. It, and that's been going on before this. It's going conflict, through shells so that the, it can go back into Biden's pocket. Before this whole conflict. I mean, the, you, you can look at world media headlines. Like Allegedly. way back when, they're all busted on Ukraine. Ukraine's the most in, con corrupt country in the world, blah, blah, blah. They're all bashed in Ukraine. Now everyone's got a yellow and blue flag on their profile right. photo. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, what is it with that I whole thing? How, how come it's uh, this whole love hate? I don't, I, don't, I don't follow it that closely. I don't know it how we, on who's in office. I don't know how we got to the Ukraine thing, <laughs> but I want to go back to the money thing because yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. money's pretty serious. Because I want to ask you because you mentioned Luke and Luke, I know is big into um, crypto. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. So He's crypto efficient and and I, you know, full you know disclosure, I do have some you know money that I convert into crypto, but my concern has become well, you're a is, genius according to Luke. Then is this is this a and I just was listening to some. Um, synopsis of uh, the NFT manual to kind of get a better grasp on that on, on the drive over here. But is th is my behavior uh, of investing in crypto actually putting me one step closer to connecting with the central bank digital currency that I don't want to be associated with? Yep. So I mean, if Possibly. it is, then I mean, it if depends it is, on how you look at it. If it is, and I don't like that idea, you know. Then yeah. I, then, you know, I, I, I prefer not to. Well, I, I would say it probably depends on, on what crypto you're investing in. It's all privacy chains like Monero and pirate chain. 
things. Right. So it's not like stuff like, I mean, I have a little bit of Bitcoin. Well, right. And, and according to Luke, Bitcoin is really the only way to go because it is completely decentralized. It has absolutely no hands in it whatsoever. No one can or will control it. That's not to say that it, it won't eventually lose all of its value and fall. It, it That could happen. It, it is entirely possible that it could, you know, you could put... $10,000 into Bitcoin today, which ends up being $30 million tomorrow. And then the day after that, it's zero. That right. is entirely possible. That's a risk so, of the market in general. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, y- you invest money anywhere, then you could end up penniless. It, right. It's a gamble. It right. really is. And unless you're, but it's a gamble that you can take statistics from and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's kind of like counting cards there. There is a way to win if you know how to do it. Yep. It, so, so, so if I'm going to gamble, I'm going to, because all of what you said, I would stipulate too. what I am concerned about is I'm, they're already bleeding. When I say they, if, if we're going to go that step, yeah, the, if we're, we're just going to say the government, right. They're already stealing from me. Taxation is theft. Mm-hmm. Might as well get that out there. Dun, if dun, is, dun. Is, is, is they're already stealing from me, like what, up to half of like what I, I bring home. Yep. I want to avoid them stealing more. Mm. So I don't care if it's decentralized, no one can control it. If someone can see a transaction and tax me on it, that's all I care about. Cause if they're going to now have me like pay taxes to them, them being the government right. because of my Bitcoin transaction, I don't want to be involved in it. Well, it's right? already a line on your 1040. So tell me, so right? is it? Yeah. Oh, so I mean, I well, yeah, once you, I, my account deals with that. So once you, uh, once you convert the Bitcoin back into real dollars, then you are supposed to report that. If you're that. trading it, right? I mean, it, right. it's so, just an, an event, right? I right. mean, that's that, that's my question too about about Bitcoin. Is right. is, is is everybody like you know I think, really I think hype it, about it because they're trading it, or it's because they're they're holding it long term? I, uh, no, I think it's because they're trading it because I think they look at it the same way as they do with uh, you know like stocks and stuff. Mm-hmm. As long as it's still in the market, then it's non taxable. It's just moving around. It's either gaining or it's losing. It's once you convert it back into real money and you take your gains from it, then they want their piece of your gains. Right. And, and I, I don't know I, how much that is it. from Bitcoin because it. I don't know that it's technically like a stock or treated as a as a, 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 a as an investment. You know what I mean? I don't know that they take the usual 40% or whatever their bullshit is on. Oh yeah. You don't know what the tax rate is, but the bottom line is it is more than it fucking should be. And talk about the biggest scam in the world is I take all the risk and you get a cut. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's the government. I'm doing all the work, and then you know, because you don't pay tax, they fucking take tax. Yeah, and that's they're going to take said, it out of your ass theft. if that's what they got to do. What's the difference between, um, you know? But the great thing about Bitcoin, right? So think of it this way: if if you say you don't pay your taxes, or you know, you you do something where you end up getting garnished, okay? The government can go into your bank account and they can literally just take your money. Oh yeah. They don't even have to, they don't have to do anything. They just walk in and take your money and then you're fucked. Right. Anything you have in Bitcoin, they cannot take. They could get you when you convert it. But I mean, if you figure out some kind of sly way of getting around that, which I mean, I don't know. You can do conduct all your business and, and, and survive your Bitcoin. Or if you find, if you find a way to subsist on stores that, just take Bitcoin mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. be able to trade it that way, then yes. you're fine. Because and then the government store- cannot get into it. It's it's cryptocurrency. It's it's encrypted. It is in it's out there in the cloud and no one can touch it. Nobody has control over it. N- yeah, control. So now I'm the government who has who wants to have control of everything. I say to the store, store Johnson, right. G- Jeremiah Johnson Brewery, if you accept Bitcoin, you're in violation of a law yep. and you'll be arrested and I'll right. put you out of business. And we'll take away your business license right. and all that. Yep. And, I'm and, gonna and be, that's probably where they'll go with it because yep. they fucking hate Bitcoin. Right. And that's exactly why. So when Bitcoin's made illegal, what are you holding? You're holding like an NFT. Whereas if I'm holding a gold coin, yeah. right? that today is worth like yeah. 1200 bucks that when the dollar finally goes to like gets close to zero as it can get right is now worth like 3000 bucks mm-hmm. as by the way like what's the guy a rich dad poor dad kiyosaki yeah. who's predicting might happen this year mm-hmm. now i have a three dollar yeah. three thousand dollar coin who's taxed me on that and then i die right a, a, a coincidental death of course mm-hmm. i died suddenly mm-hmm. and like and then i pass it i pass this coin down to like you know my my daughter it's like she gets the coin and there's no tax there's no inheritance tax there's yeah. nothing there's like there's no Who's trail know? i yeah. already paid the sales tax when i made the transaction and that's yeah. the only tax i paid right. and plus i physically hold it 
I talk about anxiety is like I log into the screen, I see numbers on the screen, those numbers are changing or dropping, I can't do anything. Yeah. Whereas if I'm holding on to this piece of gold, you know, I feel like I have a commodity in my control. That's what I'd like to see as businesses yeah. that actually would take gold and silver. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That would be cool. I mean, there's, there's pros and cons to it though, I think, because holding on to a physical medium, like, I mean, gold, whatever, that can be still be taken. That's it true. Can, but it also does have... Uh, you know, industrial use and, and right. things like that. It's actually a, a, you know, usable element that, that, that has other use. I, I think of, when I think of, of cryptocurrency, it's like, why, why can't like airline miles be cryptocurrency? Yeah, they you should know? be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. I can actually go and buy a flight with my airline miles, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's more valuable than that actually has value. It's well, at one point they said that the actual frequent flyer miles, the value of them was worth more than the whole airline industry itself. That's how much money was in airline miles. Jesus. Well, I mean, yeah, you got people with uh, those, you know, credit cards that rack up miles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, especially big spenders that just have accounts full of thousands of thousands of miles and they never spend them because they're too fucking busy. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I just, or yeah, they just travel all the time, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, if any, if everything just became like a, a, a bartering market economy, right? Because I mean, really anything has value depending on what value that you put into it. Mm -hmm. And why can't we decide as, as, as human beings, what is valuable to us and, and when right. I can conduct what kind of transaction I want to conduct. Right. Like but say I don't you, need a, a daddy to tell me. Right. But, but say you want to go with your wife on a vacation to Costa Rica. Right. And I've got 30,000, you know, airline mile points in my account that I'm not going to use. And they're about to expire in three days, but you've got a garden and I'm looking to make a whole giant pot of, uh, you know, you know, grandma's famous, uh, spaghetti sauce. And, you know, I could go to the store and get tomatoes, but I want fresh, good heirloom tomatoes and you've got them. Mm -hmm. Well, fuck, I'm not going to use these miles. Give me 30,000 points worth of heirloom tomatoes, buddy. Yeah. It's creative. That sounds it's, too much like freedom to me. I know. I'm, 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 as, <laughs> as, as the government, I forbid this transaction I because I don't see how I get my cut. Starting to smell like eagles. What, what do I get my cut? Yeah. Right. I, uh, I I think I need at least you know 10k of the tomatoes, and I'll take 10k of those miles, and you guys then you can have your transaction. Right. Well, and I mean that's the thing is we could do that, right? But but they have to put their foot there's, into everything. There's they again. Yeah. yeah. The. The well, proverbial they. Well, well it's like what they're doing with uh, Venmo and stuff now, right, where right. any transactions over six hundred dollars, you have to report, and pay taxes on. What was the, what was the meme that I saw? It's like a Rand Paul, like like Venmo, like Ukraine, like six hundred and one dollars, so that they so that now that the feds have to officially look into the government like expenditures. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. I thought That's that was awesome. just so funny. <laughs> Yeah, so That's good stuff. But going back to the a little bit back, it's like okay, so um, the ideas you know that are that are um, mandatory, right? So you have to do this to keep your job. It's like what idea that's a good idea has ever like been you know mandatory? Like mm -hmm. your idea right. of bartering, bartering's is is brilliant. Yeah, um, I, I mean, and that's the way that they think used to be in hunter gatherer societies, right? One, I don't think much of it, anything yeah. that's mandated is a good idea. Right. It's like, a good, so you, you just, you know, we're, you're talking to your cell phone. Do we all have cell phones? We all have cell phones. Did, did our employers tell us we had to get a cell phone in order to like be employed? Like, no, we got it because what? It's a freaking good idea. Mm -hmm. Like, why? why well, and that's, a, that's funny that you say that though, because there are a lot of jobs that require that you have one and, and the company will issue you one basically that you have to carry around all the time. Well, that's fine. So imagine if you're the kind of person who just still has an old cricket clamshell mm -hmm. dumb phone that, you know, still has just snake and, you know, uh, you know, that yeah, you have to hit like it. the five, like three times like, yeah. to, to like get it takes you three text. years yeah. to send. Hello. How are you? Yeah. You know? And, and I mean, I fuck, I'm almost to the point where I want to get one of those again. Mm. I, I kind of yeah. miss them actually. Oh, now you're going the opposite direction of AI. <laughs> right. But now imagine you're that person and, but you're really good at like sales or something and you get this job and they're like, oh yeah, we have to be able to get in contact with you at all times because it does require some travel. So you need to have a smartphone. You're like, yeah, I don't want a smartphone. And they're like, well, you have to have one or you can't have the job. Mm -hmm. So now, I mean, you could make the choice to say, okay, well, fuck you. I'll go somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, maybe there aren't that many jobs available that tailor to your skills and you really kind of don't have a choice. You know, you've got bills to pay, you got a family, so you got to take this job now that requires you to have a smartphone. I guess in what I was trying to say in general is 
um, most great ideas are never like mandated. Yeah. Right. So it's like if the, if this if this injection is such a great idea. Like, why would you have to force me? Right, exactly. And, and, and why would you actually start out well, by like... Full, full well, circle. Why would, why would you have to start out by like actually enticing me? Right. Like at first, it's like, oh, I get a free donut if I get this? I know. Oh, or you, you got the mayor... It should be the first tip-off right you there. The, you, got the, you talk about It's, like, it's like somebody saying, no, look, it's okay. You can trust me. Mm-hmm. Have, have you seen... Have you seen <laughs> the, trust me, bro. You, you, yeah. In peak clown world, did you see the actual mayor of Manhattan, New York City, on TV in a press conference eating burgers and fries, saying you get these delicious burgers and fries if you go get your vaccine? Like, if this vaccine is going to save my life because it's the world's deadliest pandemic, I don't need no burgers and fries. Mm-mm. Yeah, like the I'm last scared thing to death. I need like is a bunch of. Why do I need that? And how does that have anything to do with health? The I mean, pro- yeah, yeah. <laughs> that shouldn't, it, it right shouldn't there. you give me like a free gym membership or something like that yeah. if I get this or yeah. You know? Yeah, that's all you want now is you want the government involved in like gyms, right? Mm-hmm. That, the, then the gyms will go to shit, right? There'll be like one squat rack and like two dumbbells, mm-hmm. right? Because it's like the, the vaccine the, the, station and a you know. right. But I think my point in general is like it, good, good ideas aren't like it, we all have a cell phone because it's a good, it's a great idea to have a cell phone. We can mm-hmm. be in, in touch with each other, right? We can, I don't know. The, the smartphones are self-explanatory. Depends but on it's how like, you look at it. But it, but it, but it's like the perceptions, of everything. If if this if these injections were such a great idea, you wouldn't have to de- do this manipulation mm-hmm. like no one had to be manipulated into getting a cell phone like they all kind of voluntarily did it well but again you know human beings are are just stupid monkeys that hate being bored and <laughs> <laughs> and, and i think i mean cell phones sell themselves right because they're fucking cool they do a bunch of awesome shit mm-hmm. and we get addicted to them very easy and yeah i can talk to anybody i want all around the world and that's not always necessarily a good thing. And you don't do it either. And, right. and look at it this way. We now have this device in our pockets that connects us to the majority of all the information in the whole entire world at any given moment. Mm-hmm. If you want to know something, you literally just have to pull this thing out of your pocket and with your thumbs, type in whatever it is you're looking for and bam, how many people are getting dumber and dumber yes. by the fucking day? Yeah. Talk about irony. Yeah. And talk about, you said the, one of the objectives is to connect people. You can connect people, right? I can text or call or email anyone from like my pocket, like, but yet the connection between human beings is worse than ever. It's mm-hmm. worse than ever. Yep. Right. Because we were never meant to communicate in this way. Nope. And yet it's so easy that we are, it goes back to comfort. We're so comfortable because you can sit in front of this little tiny screen and you can do and say whatever you want to anybody, good or bad, and not have to look at their face. Mm-hmm. Yep. Whereas I'm sitting here right now with you guys. And if I were to say, you know, oh, JJ, you're a fucking stupid meanie head. I don't like you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if I was being a dick to you, Breathe. I would have to look at the expression on your face and see how my words have now affected you and how you feel about that. And risk getting punched in the mouth. And risk getting punched in the fucking mouth, <laughs> which I should be if I'm acting like that, you know? And, and that's what people don't think about anymore is sometimes a good shot in the teeth is fucking good for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You can just behave with impunity. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just protected. Let me just talk trash because I'm on the internet. I'm a keyboard warrior. Yeah, I absolutely hate the comment sections in YouTube. They drive me nuts. Oh, yeah. Well, my <laughs> wife loves them. Like the first thing she looks to and looks to. What's so funny is like, why do why? I don't What's the What do you guys think about the mentality of being of gravitating towards like, you know, the negative. So I'll be like, we're, we're in a strange town and family's like, what do you guys want to eat? What are you guys into? Oh, Italian. Okay. Let me look on Yelp. I use Yelp. I guess no one around here does, but even let's just say it's Google. Mm-hmm. And you go, Oh, this place has got four and a half stars. It's got like, you know, 3000 reviews, four and a half stars. Let's go there. It's gotta be great. Okay. Let me see that phone. And it's like, well, look at this one star review from four years ago. Mm. You know, yeah. like, why do you go to that? Like, oh, it's, there's something that like, both my wife and daughter like the one star reviews. It's like, you know, I, I stopped right. even giving one star reviews. It's like, you know what? I'm going li- to, I'm going to listen to what my deceased mom used to tell me. If you can't say something nice. Yeah. Right. So it's like, if it's a five star experience, I'm writing a five star review on Yelp. If it's like a one star experience, I'm not writing anything. Like yeah. I stop that. Now. It's just like the, on the, the YouTube comments is like, you get, you get those dislikes. And it's like, how can anybody dislike this? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just, they're just people that are attention. They're just, yeah. Well, and it goes, it kind of goes into why bullies even exist to begin with. Mm-hmm. Right. Because having the power to affect somebody's day and fuck with them mm-hmm. makes you feel powerful, yep. mm-hmm. even if it's negative. Mm-hmm. So it, to be able to go on there and just say what you want to say and just be a dick 
yeah, it, it gives you some sense of power. Like you've said something, you've put something out there because it is a lot easier to affect somebody negatively than it really is to have a positive impact. Right. You know, because unfortunately in this day and age, everybody's expecting negativity. It's kind of sad. And the negativity that you're kind of leaving out is instead of looking at a s screen, you know, they should be looking at a freaking mirror. And seeing like, you know what, if I want to criticize someone, let me criticize my reflection and see how I can actually get better. Right. It's an interesting it's like, thought. Imagine if to leave a comment on YouTube, you had to have a webcam and that webcam, no matter what, turns on in your face right there. and shows on the screen while you're typing mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I wonder how that would affect impact negative anybody. comments. Yeah. yeah. You're less likely. You're now looking if at you yourself. You had to stare yourself in the face while you wrote this. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if wonder, that would make a difference. I wonder if they've already done a study on that. They do so many crazy studies. I'm yeah, sure. We should do it. Someone like should figure that out. The three I, of us should put webcams on our computers. And then every time you're going to, we'll go on and do comments on yeah. YouTube. And every yeah, time you do it, you have to turn Cause on. I don't, I don't comment. Yeah. I don't look at the comments. I don't. I'm saying that we would have to just for this. Yeah. It's so hard for me to like write how does it a, make you feel to leave a comment while looking at yourself it's so hard for me to like write a negative comment i'm sure like just you you starting your podcasting career it's like you know maybe in the past like if you listen to a podcast you didn't like you might want to comment on it or like give it a different star rating now it's like okay you know how hard it is it's like you're not just going to go out and start bashing like you know people that started podcasting but if you were if you were if you were like a, a helpful good person and right. talk about this whole connection thing it's just like you wouldn't leave a negative review you would go to the business and be like, talk, can I talk to the owner? Yes. This is my, was my experience. Yes. Right. Um, I, I, you have a lot of good reviews. It's probably a one off thing, but just so you know, I, I wanted to tell you in person. Right. And they would totally appreciate that. Yeah. Right. I'm sure. And you'd feel good about, you know, hopefully improving them. And, and yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing. The owner isn't always there and people have a bad day and it's just like, you know. Well, anyway, you throw it, you know, honest, decent criticism. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that yeah. to go in and say, Hey, look, you know, I, I feel like you were struggling a little bit in these areas, but here's the things that you did right. That I was super appreciative of, you know, you guys handled this really well and mm -hmm. the service was great and all that. It's just these kind of things, you know, in my opinion, you might want to work in them, you know, take that yeah. for what it is. And you, you can know? even send them an email. A lot of businesses, you know, yeah. they give an email yeah. address or whatever. It's You're just not like, jumping on Yelp to just yeah. be like, well, these fucking prints, yeah, right, blah, exactly. blah, 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 one star. Don't ever go there. Right. But, but in my opinion, I think the dislike and the negative comments are basically projection, right? Yeah. They, they dislike themselves. They are negatively comment on themselves, but when it's put on someone else, it's easier to deal with. Cause then I can defer working on myself mm -hmm. and that whole yep. personal growth right. cause I can put it on someone else. And then that also makes me feel temporarily like better. Like, look at me. I'm not this like disliked negative comment loser on YouTube. I'm like me. And so I'm like better, yeah. but guess what? You didn't do anything. Right. Well, and a huge part of it is, uh, you know, uh, uh just attention, attention. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a big part of it. Well, Pe people just want someone to, to look at them and say this fucking guy and actually notice them because nobody ever does because they live a horrible fucking life and they don't like themselves. If you were to show like a 2022 movie or just, catch people up that were from the what from the 80s right you just like transport someone from the 80s like you were in high school and be like yeah this character is an influencer mm. you'd be like what the hell is an influencer <sighs> right <laughs> influencer an influencer, but that's like a, that, that's like a multi-million dollar, like job position career now, right? It's, I, it should be a I social guess. media influencer. I that's, that's I one, don't understand but influencers that's what I, but, and what it is they actually But that's do. to your point, right? You want attention. Then yeah. you start getting attention. Now all of a sudden you have like influence on other people's behavior. Right. Uh, now your ego is just like stoked. Oh yeah. Right. And I, I mean, I could, I mean, some people just have that, that, uh, charisma and I, I mean, they're. I have to admit, a lot of those people are pretty talented uh, sure. at what they do. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so, you know, manufacturers, companies want to attach to them and, and get the word out and all that stuff. Um, but for me, it's just, again, another an, an, another reason why I, I got to get off these things. Yes. I, I, just, I just, I'm not here to just continue buy stuff and, you know, the whole consumption. Consume, consume, yeah, consume, consume, consume. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you guys, all of your talking is just reminding me of the movie, I'm sure you remember, called Wally. -E. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The animated mm-hmm. Wally. It's like mm-hmm. they're teaching the little babies like you know B stands for by and large. I was, you know, so. <laughs> no, I was actually just thinking of uh, that eighties movie They Live with oh, Roddy, yeah. Roddy Piper with the glasses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the glasses, and when he puts them on, he can see the aliens that are controlling us, and like yeah. all the magazines and billboards and a TV and everything just says obey, obey yeah. buy, consume, mm-hmm. breed. Yep. And that then guy, you take them off, and everything looks normal. That guy lives in the meme world. <laughs> right, it's yeah, right. it's totally. the meme all over the meme world. I just watched that not too long ago. It's a great fucking movie. Yeah. It's it is so cheesy, it's so cheesy, and the aliens look corny as fuck. But it is so like great. Mars attacks, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the the concept of it and just how the movie flows and 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 everything behind it is so, in my opinion, on point. Absolutely, mm-hmm. it's part of the what we're living in today. Yeah, that, and, that, and that, like that was like nineteen eighty four. Yeah. yeah, and nineteen and idiocracy and you can, idiocracy. You, you That's can, not even a movie, dude. That is a prophecy. documentary. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He was he was way ahead of his time when he. Oh went yeah, out. brilliant. Yeah, we kind of touched on Mike Judge like last time you and I spoke. Yeah, I think we did. It's like how brilliant he was that with that 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 movie too. It's like what do you? Yeah, it's crazy. But so many people want to obey because their definition of life is getting along with someone else, right? And mm-hmm. and uh, they just. I mean, I, I actually think that the three of us sitting here could possibly be in a minority that we have the capacity to have our own independent thoughts and the ability to critically think, Mm. because I think we're just presuming that everyone possesses that. And I think it's probably not true. I think there's people that are just genuinely like, tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. I am not a slave. I just, you know, love to follow other people's orders. Yeah. Well, it's easier. It is. It's, totally it's, it's far easier to just sit back and say, tell me what to do than it is to think for yourself and to, or to pick a side. There's two options, right? Pick a side. And that's now, why we yeah. have these, that's why, that's why these portable brains, these pocket brains we have, these smartphones are like so popular, right? Cause that helps to tell you what to do. Oh, it absolutely right? does. Where I do use I? my Google calendar now for fucking everything. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> tell me what to do, Google. Right. What do I need to remember today? And now you have AI. Have you seen those apps where AI will actually organize your calendar for you? So for real? To tell you what to do. Oh, yeah. No, I haven't yeah. seen that. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, I mean, one of the things that, that gets me, especially around the whole consumerism and all that stuff, is the fact that, you know, the Fed keeps printing money and we just live in this um, dream world of the, that it's this. We, we live in a, a finite realm, but we can print infinite amounts of money That's right? funny, yeah. and things like that. And, and before, when you were talking a little bit about Rand Paul and I thought it made, made me think of Ron Paul. And mm. I mean, he, he, his whole thing is, is the, the biggest issue that we have is our monetary system. And is, no one it, understands and it. And no one understands it. Right. And, no and he was the only one that was bringing it to light. And if we could like, end the fed abolish the fed, that's, that's his whole push. Uh, then you know, you'll start to, it, or, or, and I don't even think it needs to be completely even abolished to where, just to where you can, you and I can transact in any manner that we feel like we need to, and it'll just go away. Mm-hmm. You know, if people, more and more people right. transact with, with Bitcoin right. or transact silver. with gold and silver, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, it, it'll the just dollar go starts right. it, but, in, but oddly until then, like the act of rebellion that I do is like pay with cash. Mm-hmm. One of the many um, blank stares that I remember entering like the debates when Ron Paul is involved is like they ask, they happen to ask him like, what do you have to say about the price of gas? And he's like, well, the price of gas versus the dollar, of course, has gone up. But if you compare it to gold. Like, you know, it's like pretty much not even budged. Right. And they're all looking at each other like, uh, anyways, moving <laughs> on. Like, they, like they, they don't even, they didn't even understand what he said. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's like, we're fucked. Right. Like you knew in 2008, we are fucked. Right. You better start like storing canned beans in your basement because the shit is going to hit the fan soon. Well, right? and like this, the whole thing about like, we look at like 20 cents, like two dimes, it's nothing, right? Right. But two dimes of silver. Yes. Is actually so there's another meme, right? Worth so if, bit, right? right. So if it, before they they took uh, the silver out of quarters, right, and the minimum wage was what? Once upon a time, it was like a dollar twenty five. Mm-hmm. If you were to get, imagine if I paid you a dollar twenty five, five quarters in actual silver quarters. How much you'd be making for minimum wage now? Right, it's going to be like dollars. Yeah, it's you'd like, be making more than what they're right. paying. You yeah, because be a quarter now is just a steel stamped round. Exactly. Yeah. If it yeah. was actually made out of silver, like they used to be. Five quarters would be worth 
according to the market, it'd be clo- it'd be more than fifteen dollars an hour that people are paying. And I right? think I saw that nickels cost more to make than they actually are worth. Well, they, they did that with pennies too. Yeah. So it's, it used to be pennies, right? They said yeah. like the amount of cost to employ people to manage and push around pennies and all the hours and all that stuff. It's worth costs more than the actual value of the pennies themselves. So now it's made it up to nickels. Yeah. So it's not long before. So if you come across times. a penny that's eighty two or before, hold on to it. Come across a quarter that's like sixty four or before, hold on to it. Because right. those are re, have real metal in them. Mm-hmm. Well, real copper, I believe. Real right? copper yeah. and real silver. Yeah. What's what's yeah. the year on the penny again? Eighty-two. Eighty-two, 82 and okay. sixty-two. Sixty-four. Sixty-four. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I but there, know. I mean, the chances of finding a, a penny are are a lot higher than finding a quarter. Oh yeah, I haven't for sure. Come across a quarter. I, I, I yeah. How many times have you dropped a penny on the ground, or you know, just like, thrown it, it on the every ground? Penny because I come you're across, like, I, I look yeah. at it. I look at the ear, and I throw them in a little thing. You know, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't cost me a a cent in back pain to pick to bend over and pick that thing up. But yeah, I usually put it in a jar or in a plate, and I keep it. And like at the end of the year, like I, I used to go out and like give it in like a bag to like someone homeless. Like mm-hmm. here, here's my like act of charity. But at this point, it's like these things are so, like you said, you won't even bend over to like pick some, most of them up. Like I, I, if I get like a dollar and like 85 cents and change from like the barista, like I'm putting the dollar in the thing. Cause it seems like the one, cause to put the change almost sounds like an insult, right? Like leaving right. like your waitress, like, you know, yeah. a penny, like as part of her tip, it's just like, what, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, I used to just collect all that stuff and throw it in a jar on my dresser. And then, uh, I had a couple of jars full and took them to Coinstar once. That was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they took their cut though, They're right? 10%. Oh, yeah. They, 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 yeah, they took yeah. theirs. Yeah. But I mean, I walked out of there with a few bucks. It wasn't sure. for nothing. Yeah. I know. It was worth it, right? Yeah. But money is a funny thing, right? So, and we're all lamenting our human experience because of money, mm-hmm. right? Mm, yeah. if, if we had the bartering system that you mentioned earlier, airline tickets for airline miles for tomatoes, like maybe we'd be like bitching less. You know, but we always have to go through this central thing, this money. This is that's the thing that we all have in common. Right? You could, I, now that I think about it, you could kind of look at money in and of itself as part of the rat experiment, right? Because mm-hmm. we came up with money to have a much easier way to get items and goods. Mm-hmm. You now have this this uh, you know central thing that you can use to buy anything instead of, well, I need to go get you know, a half a pound of ribs to yeah. get a, you know, a steak from Jim Bob and then, you know, whatever you, you didn't, it, it took bartering out of the equation, mm-hmm. made things easier. Well, now money provides us anything that we need. So this, I mean, that essentially is kind of the whole start of the mouse experiment. Well, it's the word that you just, you, you all but said it, which you said before, which is comfort. Money right. actually is comfort, right? It's the right. comfort of like, I'm doing a transaction with you. Think about all the comfort that is taken out when you guys actually have to negotiate between airline miles and tomatoes, mm-hmm. right? Because it's yeah. like, I don't need airline miles. I'm staying on my farm. I'm like, tomato. Now you got all right. this, but as if it's just cash, yeah. right? There's right. no cash well, made I mean, it comfortable. Sorry. In I keep a, bumping oh, in no, you're fine. In a, in a modern society, really, um, we're the least comfortable when we don't have any money, right? Mm-hmm. So cash is comfort. When you have to sit and think about like, fuck, how am I going to put gas in my car tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Uh, how am I going to buy dinner? Mm-hmm. But the fact that it's become such a scam, yeah. uh, you know, you look at the chart or whatever, since 1913, the creation of the federal reserve, yeah. it's worth like seven or 3%. Right. Right. The dollar it's only gone lost down. 93% of its value, Yep. you know, and, 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 and you look at, uh, people that are retired, you know, people that are on fixed incomes, things like that every year they're losing money. Yeah. And a savings account, the whole idea of even saving money is it it doesn't make sense because inflation outpaces. It's disincentivized. It's disincentivized. So the generations before us, they're like the whole consumer thing going. So in in terms of retirement, it still makes more sense to me though, because I personally, I'm not saying do away with the social security, but by the time I'm old enough to retire, it's probably not going to fucking exist anyway. So why am I paying for something that I'm not going to get anything out of for one? Because two, I don't want to get my check from the government at all. Right. Even when I retire at, you know, I fuck by that time, it might be required to be like 75 or some shit. Mm -hmm. Even when I retire, like for one, I'm not going to stop working. I will probably end up with at least a part-time job at a gas station or something. Cause I'll get fucking bored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm not doing this full time or something, you know, even at that age, but I don't, I don't want to get a check from the government. I don't want it. 
Well, I don't, I, I don't want them touching my money. I don't want them saying like, Oh, here you go. Here you go. Mm-hmm. So to answer the question, why? Because if you don't, you go to jail, right? And someone else will have to pay for your like, you know, meals and incarceration, mm. which makes no sense. Either way, so we all go to jail. It makes perfect sense. I mean, that's probably why half people go to jail anyway. There's a lot of people that I end can't up pay in my bills. Jail. Like, yeah, they commit, you know, small enough crimes to where they're not going to be like super so like, fucked, you, but they're going to go to prison and end up with three hots and a cot and they don't yeah, have to do shit. Yeah. You didn't pay. So he's like, we're going to put you in a jail so someone else can pay. But that's if you're like, thing, like, right? you're, you're, that's you're the whole thing. Hotel room. <laughs> Is that free room and board? Uh, and I don't know what happened, but. But social they even security. give you the job stamp and license plates. Right, right. And, and I, I don't know why when Social Security became uh, considered an entitlement anymore. And yeah, I don't want yeah. the government to be paying, uh, right. getting checks. With but that's my fucking money. Right. That you is know? so irritating. You're not getting it back. Well, it's yeah. a, so the, a, a, that, that they look on people on Social Security, you know, fixed income as fucking freeloaders. I know. Like, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> right. The, they put their money into that right. their whole yeah. life. You, you know? forced them yeah. to pay into this thing, right. their whole goddamn working career. And now you're tell- calling them free. And you raided the fund. Right. And, and, yeah. you know, and you took all the money. Exactly. Out of it. it's, not, it's insolvent. You and dip your hands into it a million our job times a year. of putting the money in every two weeks or whatever it is. And you went ahead and just, you know. So from a business, yeah. from a business. It's horseshit. Yeah. So from a business standpoint, right, from a financial monetary standpoint, does it not make sense that these people on entitlement that have put money in and are expecting money out should decrease in number. You want low, you want less of them, right? Yeah. You want yep. them to retire, get one social security check, if that, and die. Deal over, yeah. Right? You mm-hmm. want them because you don't want to pay them back. Right. Right? So let's make sure that a requirement to be in this assisted living facility is a blank packet insert. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> so it's like, right? So it's like... <laughs> or we have the most unhealthy society we've ever had. And oh, so yeah. over the years, as you're putting your money in, you're just destroying your body and decreasing your longevity. And, you know, our kids are supposed to have less longevity than us. Right. So... Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's a first time. This is the remark maybe we discussed it off air, but it... It seems to me the first time where youth is not envied, mm-hmm. like every other generation, like oh, you, can, you, can, you can, you can watch like it's a wonderful life. And, and like the old guy smoking on the porch, is like, oh, yeah. youth is wasting on its own people. Yeah. Right. Right. Cause it's like, if the, that, that's the old saying, right? Youth is wasting on the young. It's like, would you want to be young now? Like this no. kind of the world that they are, that they are going to be in, like you said, their longevity is going to be less. It's just horrible. But getting back to the social security thing, again, another little plug for private versus public. If you were to take that same amount of money and invest it in a private company, mm-hmm. how much you think you'd be getting when you retired close right. to a million dollars. Right. Now you're lucky to pull out 200 K mm-hmm. yeah. like and we're, we would be lucky to pull out 2 K. Right, and what's two K going to be smart enough to put it in themselves? You know, because I mean, they don't teach it in s- freaking school. Right, <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, it's yeah. Right, because they teach nothing practical in school except for like George Carlin said, just how to be a slave, be smart yeah. enough just to be know how to push the buttons. Yeah. Getting back to license plates, he also had a great thing on license plates. Can you imagine being a prisoner in New Hampshire where you're stamping out on the license plate, "Live free or die"? <laughs> 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 I gotta take a bathroom break. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. Uh, George Carlin was a fucking genius, man. He really was. I mean, I, I I didn't agree with everything he said, but man, some of the stuff that he came up with was so just. I mean, not even not even really ahead of his time, but mm-hmm. I mean, it, that guy knew how to just just punch it, you know. Nobody was, was talking just, about that stuff, really, right? Yeah, I mean, they not really. I mean, you had like a little bit, but you had like Dice Clay, you know, who mm-hmm. was just I mean, vulgar and hilarious, but yeah, there wasn't a lot of people other than Carlin who was actually hitting the nail on the head with a lot of that stuff. Right. What about Hicks? Wasn't. Oh yeah. Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks yeah. yeah. He did. Yeah. Yeah. He was great. Mm-hmm. I, I love that joke of his where, uh, you know, he talks about, um, you know, drugs and how uh, everybody thinks, you know, drugs are bad and all this stuff. And he's like, he's like, well, if you don't think drugs are a good thing, then go, I want you to go home right now. And I want you to take all your albums, all your tapes, all your CDs and take them out in the yard and fucking burn them. Because I'll tell you right now, all of those great artists who've made all that wonderful music that has enhanced your lives over throughout the years, real fucking high on drugs. <laughs> 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 that is freaking awesome. Yeah. Hicks is great, man. Yeah. That's too bad that he died. I know. I, I can't remember how he went. Uh, it was either, uh, I want to say it was a uh, liver cancer or something. Um, yeah. Joe Rogan. Uh, he talks about meeting him just shortly before he died or what was it? 
was it him? I want I want to say it was Joe Rogan. I think Joe Rogan met him too, and then there was another comedian that it was that, like in the eighties, wasn't it? That he died. Yeah, no, I, no. Actually, I think it was late nineties. Oh, was um, it? Yeah, it was. Uh, one of one of Joe's comedian friends talks about how he always thought that Hicks didn't like him. Oh, it was a carrot top. Oh, God. yeah. He he did a show with Carrot Top, and Carrot Top talked about how uh, Hicks always did these jokes about Carrot Top, and you know the the jokes were kind of making fun of him and putting him down a little bit. So, excuse me. He always thought that Hicks didn't like him, and one of the last things that Hicks did before he died was he came to one of Carrot Top's shows, and he caught him you know, in the, in the back by the green room and, you know, shaked his hand and, you know, all that stuff. And was like, Hey, you know, this is a really good show. And carrot top was, uh, he was like, I always thought you fucking hated my guts. Cause he always did those bad jokes about me. And he was like, no, I didn't hate you. He was, you were just easy to pick on. We're comedians. That's what we do, buddy. <laughs> right. Right. He's like, no, I think you're actually great. Your shows are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then he died like a week after that. That's, that's insane. That is. Do you imagine like somebody that you look up to who you thought your whole life didn't like you. And then the last thing that you get from him before he dies is no, you're fucking great. Right. That's the thing about comedians and they say that, right. I'm just joking around, but well, why are jokes funny? Cause in, uh, yeah. in almost all of them, there's a bit of truth. Yeah. Right. Right. Otherwise you well, can't yeah. relate to it. Yeah. But I mean, when you think about it, you know, your, your true friends, oh, yeah. they know the most about you and your true friends, they don't give in to your bullshit, mm -hmm. right? They're going to call you out on everything. Absolutely. So, I mean, especially with guys, I mean, we fuck with each other the most mm -hmm. because we like each other right. and we know everything about each other. Right. Yeah. And it's funny. The ones we don't really like, we're like, yes, Nicknames sir. Nicknames and right? all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so Bill Hicks has got a great clip on like the, it's not that long. It's called, it's just a ride, right? He's the one who said it's just a ride, mm -hmm. right? So you ever, you, you ever get worried about life? If you have anxiety, you should just take, take a look at that clip. Cause it's like, it's, it's classic. It reminds you, right? If you're all worked up about, you know, I got to live longer. I got to wear a mask. I got to do this. I got to do that. See, Whatever it is. Oh yeah. There's one. Yeah. It's fantastic. How long is that? Two, Two minutes. It's worth it though. He's, yeah. this is fantastic. I, I, I think know. of Bill Hicks. I think of this. I don't know if we'll get a, I don't know if we'll get a, a copyright hit on that. Uh, maybe if I there do, I guess point. we'll cut it out. Is there a point to all this? Let's find a point. I love Bill Hicks, so I guess it's worth listening to. Yeah, he died February 1994. I would say there is. I have to. <laughs> we were just talking about the that joke that like he did about an drugs. Park. Yeah. And how, uh, how if you think drugs are bad, go burn all your tapes and CDs. Yeah. Yeah. Round and round. It has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud, and it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real, or is this just a ride? Pretty sure he had uh, anxiety issues and stuff, too. To and they say, hey, don't worry. A lot of comedians do. Ever, mm. Because this is just a ride, and we kill those people. <laughs> <laughs> Shut him up. <laughs> we have a lot invested in this ride. Shut him up. Look at my furrows of worry. Look at my big bank account and my family. This is, has to be real. It's just a ride. But we always kill those good guys who try and tell us that. You ever notice that? And let the demons run amok? But it doesn't matter because it's just a ride. And we can change it anytime we want. Mm -hmm. It's only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now mm. between fear and love. The eyes of fear want you to put bigger locks on your door, buy guns. Close yourself off the eyes of love. Instead, see all of us as one. Here's what we can do to change the world right now. God, he was a fucking genius, to a too. Ride. Take all that money we spend on weapons and defense each year and instead spend it feeding, clothing, and educating the poor of the world, which it would many times over. Not one human being excluded, and we can explore space together, both inner and outer, forever in peace. Take that 2.7 billion that we just gave to Ukraine and instead dish it out to the, the, you know, quote unquote, poor and underfunded people here in our own country and take care of us first. And that's just the most recent, right? Isn't it like 60 billion or something like I that? They're up to 80 billion. I mean, yeah. What's the total now? Yeah. I have no idea. How much did, track. how much did they give out for, uh, uh, the stimulus when Bush did it? Bush Jr. 
That's oh, yeah. that's what I want to know because uh, I mean it was bail, in the billions the too. Bailout? Yeah, the, too big, the too big to fail thing. Yeah, what was that? The well, too no, big the to too fail? big to fail. That was Obama. Yeah, that was okay, Obama. So. I'm talking about the one that uh, Bush Jr. did back in the early 2000s, right after be- 9/11. Yeah, it was right before Obama came in, I believe, in 08. So yeah, it was at the end of 2007 or something like that, right? Obama came in in 08, and yes, he was out right. in 16 when Trump came in. Yes. So what was that? That's true. I don't know. What uh, to, I don't know what the name of it is. George it seems like another bail- government bailout. I know they bailed out the airline industry. Or at least the ones that like that right. were involved. No, you spelled it. Well, and here's always a thing that that comes to mind for me, and and your wife JJ had said this when we had coffee the other day. Oh, seven hundred billion. What are we going to do about it? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. She's always asking what you know. She's you know action, not words. So right. it's true. We well, yeah. Everyone's got their own answer to the question. Some people don't think anything's wrong. What are we going to do? We're going to continue to uh, follow orders and just see where it goes. Is there a date there? What's that date say? I just see Charles's name from here. The name of the author of the article down below is October 2nd, 2008. October 2nd, 2008. Yeah. So October 2nd, 2008. So yeah, this would have been the last thing that he did before he uh, handed over power to Obama, I believe. Yeah. So Bush signed 700 billion financial bailout bill. And this is from NBC news at that time. So 700 billion, right? And do you guys remember how much you got? from that oh zero you didn't get any no, this was no. in 2008 yeah 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 i don't remember getting anything okay so it it depended on your household income how many kids you had all that stuff um i remember i think i got i think i got like 600 bucks or something mm-hmm. but pretty much uh, depending on those factors everybody in the u.s got a check mm-hmm. and it was somewhere between 300 to if you got anything it was somewhere between 300 bucks and like I want to say two grand. And so the whole idea behind that was uh, stimulating the economy to take that money and put it back through all of the businesses, everything. Right. And there was a lot of argument that, okay, well, if everybody goes and they just, they just spend that money, well, where's it going to go? It could end up in China. It could end up in fucking Europe or whatever, because of how much we import. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause we don't fucking make anything here right. anymore. Right. We really don't. Um, and that's, and that's all good, great and grand. And that's, and that's not a bad argument, but when you look at the grand scheme of things and what this was designed to do was to stimulate businesses here in the States. And it did that in my opinion, it did because whether you were going to buy a TV or you were paying your rent or your car note or whatever it is you were doing with it, you know, they didn't stipulate what it was for. You could spend it on anything. And it did exactly what it was supposed to do. I took my 600 bucks and I took a trip over to Seattle. I went to uh, the Experience Music Project, um, stayed in a hotel, you know, bought dinner over there, uh, paid for gas the whole way there and back. I mean, it, it went to a lot of different things. So this was 700 billion that went to almost every person in, in the United States. So even 2.7 billion which is a minuscule amount. Mm -hmm. If you were to take that still and put it only towards one thing, which would be the homeless population or helping out, uh, you know, uh, disabled veterans. I mean, anything that you put that 2.7 billion towards, that's a good chunk of change. Mm -hmm. That's definitely going to help out. That's better than the couple of million dollars that, you know, some celebrity might donate to cancer research or something or shit, even cancer research, $2.7 billion. I mean, that's going straight to, you know, pharmaceutical companies that really aren't going to do shit with it because even if they find a cure for cancer, they ain't going to fucking give it to us. Well, and I think that uh, what we've seen, if we look at history, is that we are in this continuous cycle where we are continually uh, letting our the financial terrorists run amok yeah. and creating these problems. And then the answer is a bailout, which is debasing the currency more and more and more because all they do is just print put numbers on a screen and at some point I feel like people need to wake up and realize that it's completely mismanaged. And, right. and I mean, I mean, how I stand is I'm completely for abolishment, but at least, uh, coming up with some serious, uh, ways of fixing it. Because as, as you can see, this was in 2008, what did we have in 2020? I mean, it's, it's like, a, it's on a cycle every you know, decade or more, there's some sort of financial catastrophic event, which puts us more and more and more into that slavery mindset to where, right. or, to, or position where 
the value of the currency is going to be so little. And these guys, you know, the people at the top don't give a shit if they're giving away $700 billion. It's a freaking drop in the bucket for them. But for us, it's a lot of money. And so we're going to be, the, the dollar is going to be continually de- debased, debased, debased until we get to the point to where we are literally slaves and, and oh, they yeah. are at the top. And yeah, when you look at the trillions of dollars that we are now in the hole on, mm-hmm. right. And they just keep, it'll never be more paid more. back yeah, ever. Never. The thing is, is that our total financial system would collapse if it was paid back. Cause it's all based on debt. And that's right. the whole thing. Like Robert Kiyosaki says and all that it's, it's, and these guys have figured out how to, how to, um, work around it and become wealthy is that you become wealthy by, by creating debt. I mean, you hear all these people talk about, don't go into debt, don't go into debt. And, and, and I made some mistakes too, where I'm like, you know, I, I don't want to spread, spread myself too thin. I sold all my homes and things like that. And it's just like, no, you should be taking as much debt as they'll give you so that you can build wealth on that. That's the way the system's built. How many of those, right. how many of those people that got Bush's checks for like 600 bucks, put them into a savings account? Mm. Probably would be, how much would it be worth now? Zero. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. You know, right. it'd be worth it, it, interest rates so low. So they're encouraging debt, right? Yeah. So they want you to be debt because when you're in debt, what are you? You're the slave that you just right. described, right? Exactly. Yeah, and interest rate is what, like 0.5% or something like that? At 2008? I don't know. But the, but the, the thing is, they wouldn't do savings, right? They want, like you said, that it was intended to be put back into the economy. Right. right? Because so, the economy only survives if it's there's this constant consumption. How much of that? Right. And, and when right. you can what do you do? You pay taxes in most places. Yeah. Like, so how much of that money is actually going back? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, depending on the state, I mean, in Idaho, 6%. So, so everything that you buy, they get 6% of that back. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that, that's the whole like scheme. That's the whole kind of like scam of everything. And then just by printing it more and giving it out to everyone, it's just like, it makes it, you, you did nothing right today, except for like hold the $20 bill, like in your wallet. And then like you go outside after this podcast and you go to buy something that yesterday cost 20 bucks and now today it costs 22. Yep. Yeah. So it's like, what did I do? Tomorrow it costs I didn't 24. do any, I didn't do anything. I wasn't reckless by spending. Meanwhile, if you have the unique monopoly and position of power, at, you know, at the end of the barrel of a gun, perceived power to, to tell, to tell someone else, give me your money which is in their money and I can waste it right in front of your face by either sending it to another country to be laundered or to do some stupid research project. You know, Mm-hmm. Rand Paul every like year seems to do this like and I think this year he did like the night before Christmas poem and he like t- and he goes through all these things the government spends money on like mm-hmm. if you had to li- look at this list or hear this list moments before you participated in the voting ritual like you would probably be changed like you know you did, okay show up with your te- your check don't have it like bleed out to you like every you know paycheck so you don't like silently know like what you're paying instead get all your money come to the voting place yeah. with your check listen to the list of stuff the government's going to spend your money on you're about ready to hand them and then cast your vote mm-hmm. how do you think things would be different Right. Oh yeah. Presuming, insanely different. Presume, presuming that, you know, there was actually a lecture integrity. That's the, that's the big premise, right? Which we know there's not, but the, you do nothing. You just you, you're getting back to the retired people. They do nothing. They just tried to skimp. They like avoided vacations. They work double shifts yeah. and three jobs. And they're just like totally trying to get money so they can finally retire because they've always wanted to do one trip to Ireland or whatever it was. And then they get there and they find out like, Oh, flights are so expensive. Yeah. Like I can't afford it anymore. Mm-hmm. Even though I like, I scrimped and saved my whole life. Right. So you just like found out like you're being released from slavery. Isn't as You're just in another cage. Mm-hmm. You right? are. <laughs> I let you out of this. Yeah. I let you out of this cage. You think you're free and you're in a n- bigger cage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, essentially, we're all slaves. Indeed. And, and there's a hierarchy to it. We, you know, we are slave to the lender and the lender possibly is slave to the government, right? And the government is slave to whoever they owe money to. But unlike the people that you mentioned that are in the upper up in the hierarchy, right, that some people don't want to exist, you can't behave like them, right? You owe right. your debt. Oh, you yeah. You owe your debt. Right. right. If you make bad decisions, if you decide you're American Airlines and because you have the great name American, you're mm-hmm. representing the whole country. If you decide that you don't want to have and pay for the tight security that like, say, El Al has to try and f- fly to Tel Aviv and you're not going to screen every single individual before they get on a plane and someone hijacks it and causes not only your stock to crash, your plane to crash, your whole business to possibly crash and go bankrupt, right? You don't have to pay off that debt. Guess what? You go to the government and say, but we're American Airlines. You can't let us go out of business. (laughs) Give us a handout. 
right? You talked right? to us about and, this. Is we, we you wouldn't let our company fold if we went along with your little scam? Yeah. You there you go. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, so there, you, so there you go. So it's like you have to pay off your debt. A, a place, a, a, a companies that are so big that they're too big to fail, they can make reckless decisions, and when they lose, they get bailed out. Right. Right? right. So you're the little guy. So this is why, like, even they, in this book that I just read, uh, the the democracy, the God that failed. One of his arguments is that, like in a kingdom, in a monarchy, at least, like it's the it, the royalty is under the same rules, laws, regulations as the people, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly we live in a society where the rich, the powerful, the politicians are not under the same rule as the people. Right. Yeah. Because who went to jail for all this financial terrorism? Nobody. 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 Yeah. Well, yeah. It, um, I've, I've brought this up before. I mean, uh, do you guys ever see that movie, The Big Short? Oh, it's oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Best Fucking. picture nominee if they didn't win. Yeah. They didn't margin win. call. Even if you only watch it for the part of uh, Margot Robbie in a bathtub, it's it's worth the watch. <laughs> but uh, yeah, at the end As of She it, explains uh, what, uh, subprime or something like that. Yeah, yeah, one of those things. That, that's, that's what I love about it is because the whole movie, you know, they they talk about stuff that yeah, Anthony it, Bourdain explaining to you what like, you know, right. Most people aren't going to understand what's going on and all that. So there's several spots in the movie where they, they bring in, you know, some celebrity or something. Um, and they, and they, they pose as themselves mm -hmm. to explain in layman's terms, what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. And it, and that's what I love about it is because it is easier to follow that way. Yes. And it makes you think you're like, dude, are you fucking kidding me right now? Right. And, but at the end of it, you know, they just put a couple of, you know, the blurbs on the screen that you read and, and it talks about how it was like through that whole housing market crash and how all of that came to be and how they, they fucked up the entire economy with the bullshit they were doing is basically one guy, one guy who was basically just a pawn. He was a fucking scapegoat ended up going to prison mm -hmm. and we're talking like rich guy prison where there's tennis and TiVo and mm -hmm. probably catered food and stuff. Sure. I mean, he's not, I guarantee Sounds he like was retirement. Yeah. Right. I guarantee he wasn't having a bad time. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's insane to me that they knew what they were doing the entire time. They knew what they were going to cause. Maybe not on that scale, but they knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. They're they're selling subprime loans to people that they knew couldn't afford them once they once they're expired and hit prime. They knew they couldn't afford them, and they sold them anyway because they were making so much money. But not just that. Once it collapsed, right? Yeah. Once they waited for the crash. They made their money when everything was going up, right? What did they use that money for? Now the market goes down. Let's buy all this land. Mm -hmm. Let's buy right. all this property. Yeah. So now we got the good of both ends. So now what was once cash that we made by being predators on all these like poor, like, you know, people that didn't know any better, right, are now being converted into land. Now we own the land. Right. right? Well, in the middle of that is is the whole fact that, yeah, they sold those subprime loans, but then they packaged them as a, you know, they pack, high quality uh, yeah. investments. So people they packed their, them as triple A investments right. and they weren't. So they were and they weren't built on garbage. And they right. were built on garbage. And then so people invested in them, regular people with yeah. their retirement funds and whatever else. Yep. And then they just got fucked. And so it wasn't just the the homeowners that got fucked. It was everybody. Right. Everybody got fucked. Right. Except for the guys who were smart enough to see what was going to happen and bet against mm -hmm. the market. Right. The big short. Right. Right. And the eccentric uh, physician who likes heavy metal. Right. And the, the barefoot uh, Christian Bale character. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 Who's, you know, people had to be patient with him, but he, but he finally he finally came around. But uh, this is analogous for me in the same exact way as what we're going with the experimental injections. Right. Mm -hmm. So the important character in the big short is the brief counter that in a confrontation meeting that they had with the woman who represented, I think it was Moody's. Right. So you have to have some kind of yeah. quote, objective third party to say, oh, mm -hmm. these packagings are great. Right? Yeah. These are really triple A rated when the truth of the matter is they're like B. Right. Or they're low or they're oh, worse. Yeah, they were, they right? were worse so you're me. so you're basically like putting a piece of dog crap and you're making it look like this is shiny, like great toy. This very valuable right. thing. Right. But you're you, wrapping cat turds in gold leaf and the, selling them for you the, know, the, the person. Of but the person that's saying, right, the supposedly objective third party Moody's or whatever their competition was, she admitted that, like, we have to give them a good rating. Otherwise, they're going to go to our competition right. and they get the rating. So they have to give this thing a good rating. They're getting a kickback to give the good rating. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's like 
like uh, if you're into cars, which I'm not, but you like do car and driver. It's like, well, they have ads in this thing too, right? And like the, the, this ad by Chevy, it's like three page ad. It's like, no, oh, no wonder like the new Corvette's got this five star like high rate, but no one puts that together. Right. No one right. Puts that together. Yeah. It's like, oh, look at this new thing on the on the Corvette. It's fantastic. And it's a Chevy Levy magazine when they are billing themselves as being objective mm-hmm. third party. We're going to do this independent review. Right. Much like the CDC. Right. Or the FDA, where it's just completely funded by the pharmaceutical company. Right. So it's like, of course. Right. You know, you, you, it's even Sony got busted like years ago. There is a fake these fake accounts that were created to give Sony movies these huge high star ratings. Right. So it's like everyone goes on. They look like, oh, wow, this Sony movie. They don't know it's by Sony, but this movie is like really great. Well, if you extrapolate, they finally find out all these bots that were yeah. created by Sony made it look good. Well, there, was a, there was a big deal on uh, Amazon with that too, which they ended up finally cracking down on getting rid of all these, uh, you know, fake ratings and reviews and all that shit because people were using bots to go onto their store pages and leave great reviews and high star ratings on all this just Chinese junk that they were fucking selling. And that's the equivalent of like Moody's in the big short saying like, this isn't junk. This is actually very valuable. This is triple A. Right. right. So every, so then that allowed the whole charade to go on. Cause if the market could actually see nakedly for what it was, you'd just be like, what, what is this crap? Mm. Why is this valued so highly? <laughs> right. And then the crash would have been I'm not saying it wouldn't have occurred. It may have been less intense. Right. But, but it's the thing is, is it is that nothing nothing got done to rectify it. So we're There's we're, no build, we're building on that in event that, that yes, there's still all of those bad investments or whatever that that are still on the books that right. haven't been dealt with. Yeah, and, and, right. and it's just building and building and, and building. And, and, well, and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's true. I haven't looked into it, but at the end of that movie, they were saying that they're doing it all over again. They're mm-hmm. doing the same exact thing, just with a slightly different set of rules, and they're calling it something different. Right. So it's just a matter of time if that's true before it happens again. And you can see it. I mean, how how long can the average Joe survive with how much food costs now? How much rent? cost now how much gas costs now i mean they want it day to day because that's the way a slave behaves come to me every day big daddy government open your hand i'm going to give you universal basic income i'm going to give you just enough to survive for the week come back to me next week and as far as i'm concerned keep going back to your slave job keep Mm -hmm. pushing those buttons and keep making money for me meanwhile we'll have ai do your job in next year yeah right next year ai is going to do your job so then you're out and i'll show you like how much we and then we're going to have to move you to the uh you know the camp over here because you can't afford you 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 can't uh you know qualify for any of these new jobs which won't be a white collar prison like you mentioned we'll we'll be a fema camp yeah we'll, we'll keep you over here we'll keep you sheltered and all that stuff but you won't you know, it's going to yeah. be like solitary confinement. Well, that, that reminds me of this, uh, this uh, article that I found. It's from Fortune. And, and I honestly uh, didn't get to reading much of it. Um, but uh, the, the headline of it is robots are coming and it doesn't look pretty for workers. Get ready for long hours, less pay and fewer jobs. It says uh, a new study examining the effects of robots and automation uh, that what is that? The Chinese let me make this bigger labor segment. market the Chinese shows labor market shows workers are under fire, which I mean, if this is just talking about the Chinese labor market, okay, sure. But it is talking about Americans and it says Americans who worry about robots taking their jobs are just quote fear mongers who've watched too many movies. Right. And so it's asking a question, mm-hmm. but it says artificial intelligence, AI, uh, automation and robotics will boost workers productivity and spur economic growth while creating new higher paying jobs, or at least that's the argument. Mm-hmm. But new research shows the rise of robots may not be as beneficial for workers as some claim. Automation could have positive impacts on economic growth and productivity, according to The Economist. But workers might not reap the rewards. Exposure to robots had negative effects on employment, uh, leading some workers to drop out of the labor force and increasing unemployment. So the way that I look at this, what they're saying, you could liken this to... um, you could liken this to the, uh, you know, the ever evolving problem of illegal immigration. So illegal immigrants come into the country, they're undocumented, they don't pay taxes, they'll work for next to nothing, you know, and so they go in and, 
and, and I've, I've heard every argument in that whole gamut of, well, if somebody, and if an undocumented worker can come over and take your job, well, then it's not a very good job. And you should be, you should be fucking embarrassed to have your job stolen by an undocumented worker. And I kind of get that mentality and maybe that might be kind of true to a point. But when you look at this whole thing with robots, that that's kind of the same thing, because if a company can just if they can just pay a, to buy a bunch of robots who can do what you can do and they don't have to pay it, they don't have to give it lunch breaks, they don't have to give it uh, paternity leave, they don't have to give it time off to go on vacation and relax. They don't have to, to go to the bathroom to take a dump in yeah. their break. Yeah, exactly. They don't have to worry about you calling in sick. They don't have to worry about paying your retirement. Just software So the upfront, so the upfront, right? So software as a service, whoever is controlling the software and the robots is going to make big fucking bucks because sure. if you want, I, I mean, I know this for a fact, all the machines that we use at my work, the software is all software as a service. You have to pay a monthly subscription mm -hmm. to, to even use it. So, I mean, those guys, and it's, a, it's a ridiculous amount in my opinion, but mm -hmm. yeah, when you look at how this how this is this just the headline alone makes perfect sense because now the upfront cost for these machines may be in the in the hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars range it's an upfront cost but when you look over time at the savings by not having to pay um, not having to pay you know taxes on on all these workers not having to pay their wages not having to pay for all of their benefits not having to pay into the workers comp right. and workers comp claims and everything and else security and all that oh yeah. yeah everything else that goes into having to have employees work for you then this is worse in my opinion than illegal immigrants i would almost rather now have illegal immigrants come over here and take these jobs well, well, the, that, <laughs> then the, the question would be like why is there why are there so many illegal immigrants like rushing into a country that's like soon to adopt ai like well, you said you said like, it's china but like are we not just like another like state of china mm -hmm. at this point are we just I mean, not like a colony of china at are this we a point, colony of china almost, i mean almost. we have the records we have the receipts if any major right. if any legacy media cared to like look in the hunter's laptop right and actually treat it like a real story right instead of protecting instead of being paid off by china also right, right. to say anything bad about the biden administration we'd already make the we'd already have the connection the fact that like the guy is uh, you know what the, the the demented pedophile is being paid been paid off by Xi for like how long right right it's been, it's been going on for decades Right. So it, to me, it's like we're already part of China. So this coming here is like no one's going to be surprised about that. What it reminds me of is a fiction book I read a long time ago, which I want to reread now that you've showed me this by Kurt Vonnegut. He used to be my favorite author when I was in like high school and it's called Player Piano. So the human beings, I think I've heard of that. The, the human beings aggregated at this bar to kind of commiserate as they drank, and the entertainment at the bar was the player piano, the automated piano. So it was the, served as a symbol. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. served as a symbol of the first AI. We don't even need a human to be playing the piano. Like we're going to take off, and it took off from there. He was not considered a sci-fi writer, but a lot of his like bent. If you've ever read like you know, Breakfast of Champions or Slaughterhouse Five, it's very. It, it has a lot of sci-fi type overtones, but player piano is what this reminded me of. Yeah. It's that's, like, kind, that's kind of a funny thought that the player piano you could think of as actually the first computer long before they built that giant one at, at, at what is it, MIT or whatever that took up an entire room. Mm -hmm. IBM or yeah, yeah. IBM Watson. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy to think about. Yeah. So it's, so I think I might revisit, I don't read much fiction at all like these days, but I would go back and read that. It's not, not that long, but yeah, I, mm. I, so I don't, it's confusing to me. Like, why would you want so many more human bodies in this area? If you're just going to end up replacing them with machines anyways? Uh, well, yeah, because it, because there are people coming here that, that will, there are people coming here who want something, right? And so if our government is, is continuously and increasingly just giving shit away, uh, you know, oh, oh yeah, you're an illegal alien. Well, you can still go get a license. You're an illegal alien. Well, here's a bunch of money for you to start a business and have a great life here in the United States. Oh, 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 natural born citizen. Fuck you. Get out of here. Yeah. We're not giving you anything. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Oh, but but you, Jose, or you know whoever, come on down. You know, we'll we'll help you out. We'll give you free health care. We'll give you a cell phone. We'll give you all this shit so that you can make a great life here in the United States. What's going to happen? Well, more than likely, 
that person is going to vote for you. And that's what they're doing. They're, they're bringing in people that are going to vote for them so that they can try to hold power. But see, I don't even know why that's necessary because when you can get 81 million votes while staying in your basement, because everything's mail in now, Mm -hmm. right? When you can have like a stroke and be a vegetable on TV in the state of Pennsylvania, right? And like wearing a hoodie and like just basically barely utter like complete sentences well, right? if you could and, and win because like 56% of like your votes were like mail-in votes. Well, if you right? could technically get every vote that you wanted to just by hacking into some Dominion voting machines right. and then conveniently burning them in a fucking warehouse fire. I mean, right. yeah, so, why do you need all those people? Right. So I'm but you can't, you can't be that obvious about it. Come on, JJ. I'm trying to, but I'm trying to drill deeper. So, <laughs> we, so we don't, we don't really need them as a labor force because we're going to have AI doing these jobs anyways that they would do. Right. right, because they're all low skill. We, we're presu- we're stipulating to that uh, okay. low skill initially, right? But who knows? I mean, as it progresses, as it progresses, I mean, theoretically, if you're believing that the, the, it's still the land of opportunity in the American dream, yes, someone could come across with no skill at all and eventually be the guy writing the subscription for the software that does the AI. Yeah, that's theoretically possible. Like, but for the most part, the majority of these people that are coming across are not going to be doing the labor that the AI is going to be doing, right? So if we, so they're out for labor. If the election integrity thing is true, too, and basically there's just mail-in ballots of like either dead or phantom people, right? Then we don't need the votes either. So why do we really need, why do we really need these human beings? My opinion is, is that it's much like inflation, printing more money. It's human inflation. Mm-hmm. And what does that do? It devalues right? It's to devalue right. the land. It's the China, our landlords, they don't want it valuable because they want to own it outright and they want to make it just public. They want to put the red and you know flags with the yellow sickles and stars on every freaking street corner and just be like, let's make it official now. You guys are, your, your land mass is now ours. We just own you all, you bitches, because you're no longer valuable because anybody can come go to your country. You just right. need to pour across the border. There's no system rhyme or reason all you got to do is put your two feet over the line and you're on this thing and you're now part of it and guess what that devalues everything oh think about think about it my father and this is why it gets personal my father was a naturalized citizen right from the philippines so first of all he waited seven years just to get a visa to be able to come to this country then he had to take all these classes he had to pass all these tests just to become a naturalized american citizen so he went through the whole process what was the result? The result was, and when I told him, like, hey, Dad, why do you keep taking the Chevy to the shop every week? Why don't you just get, like, a Toyota like our neighbor does? Oh, he flew off the handle. I make my money in this country, and I'm spending my money in this country. And as right. he's yelling at me about how patriotic he is, because he flew the flag in front of the house every day, not just on Flag Day and Fourth of July. And I looked around the kitchen as he's yelling at me, and I noticed every single appliance was a United States made appliance. Back then, they, right. they actually made them in the United States. But I was like, wow, this guy's taking this thing really seriously. But now, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? It doesn't, because you just walk across the line, you're in. And so... I think it just devalues all of us. Well, and, and I mean, that that whole thing is completely devalued at this point anyway, because again, we don't make anything here anymore. Yes. I mean, not much. Very little. You know, and and if it is, if it is labeled made in America, when you read the fine print, it's really just assembled here. Yes. All the components are made in Mexico and Taiwan and China and, mm-hmm. you know, Germany and all these other places. Yeah. They're assembled here. Even fucking Harleys anymore. They're not made in America. They're assembled in America by yeah. American hands, but they're not made in America. Yeah. But the thing, they're not hand. <laughs> Y'all right over there? <laughs> yeah. The thing, the thing is for, for me though, with the whole, I mean, I don't believe in borders or any of that stuff anyway. So, uh, but I do believe in people wanting to do the best they can for their families. And so, yeah, the, 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 the different programs and things like that that are available here can, that can make their life better. I don't blame people for wanting to come over here. Right. Yeah. I, I don't either. And especially the chaos that we've created down there with the drug cartels and all that stuff. Is, right. It's just, it's just created an environment right, where it's because like, we I feed wanna, that shit. The U S government is one of the biggest drug and gun dealers mm-hmm. in the world. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Mexican government is so corrupt as it is anyway. Right. Uh, you know, and so th- th- they're suppressing their people and everything. And so, yeah, the, I, 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 it's no brainer why you'd want to try to do the best you can for your family. So uh, for, I mean, for me, it's, 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 we're not going to, to, 
to solve these problems with with more government it's it's just not and and that's what people seem to think is oh yeah we'll do ubi and you know we just have to vote harder and all these different things to get the right people in there but at the end of the day i think we've seen that it's just a failed experiment and it's just run by criminals yeah <laughs> oh yeah getting back to my point about like the law is not universally applied because it was universally applied how many people that voted McCarthy in for like Speaker of the House would be in jail because mm -hmm. they've all got criminal backgrounds. They're mm -hmm. all basically criminals, but they can get away with it because they're connected. They're in the club. Right. Right. As until as they, they until they do something they're not supposed to. And then they like what go to Epstein's Island. I haven't seen any of those people held accountable. Right. You know, the pimp was uh, held accountable, but she pimped apparently out 14 year old kids to nobody. Right? Yeah. I'm surprised that chick is still alive. Yeah. 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 It, it's it, fucking beyond ridiculous to me how even for the smallest infraction any one of us will you know if we get busted we get you know i mean from the most minor thing a warning but a ticket or end up in jail fines i mean prison you fucking name it right and then the, you know these big financiers and everybody responsible for collapsing our entire fucking economy and screwing us up and screwing so many people over across the entire country nobody gets in trouble right i mean the, pe the people committing the greatest the real crimes fucking the criminals you know i mean yes on top of murderers and everything because when you think about it there's a lot of people who they lost their homes they lost their livelihood they lost everything and how many of those people ended up killing themselves right oh so, so many it's all part of the plan it's yeah. another part of the plan to depopulate to the planet depopulate the planet or, right or to just in, enslave and and but in, but in a sense that blood is on their fucking hands i mean that so how come none of them ended up really, in, I mean, in prison or getting in trouble? Because they're all in the club. And then what, right. It's part of the plan. And then what does our government do? They give them millions and billions of dollars to fucking bail them out. Right. right. And then they go and they buy jets from France yeah. and go on vacations and enrich themselves. And all that other yeah. slaps in the face. It's just like, come yeah. on, are you yeah. kidding me? Because no one's holding them accountable. So where is, so the question is, where is the line like this protecting them? Is it all their like private security? Is that it? Is that the line? No, it's kickbacks. Because if we were back in the hunter gatherer society and there's just some dude mm. there who's got like no skills, there was like Bill They're Gates like a ghost. telling you what to yeah. do. It's like, you'd be like, dude, you're telling me what to do. I'm going out there. I'm risking my life. I'm killing all this stuff, exposing myself to death. And I'm coming back and giving it all to you. Mm. Like, that's what, that's what you want to have for just sitting there on the hot, because you happen to sit on the highest rock. Fuck you. I'm pulling off that rock. You're like done. Well, that one right? guy got the pie in the face. Yeah. The Bill Gates. Gates. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. well that you've seen that meme, right? Where there's a look on his face after the pie comes off and he's got this like expression, just like total glare. It's like the moment that Bill Gates decided to like off humanity. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's like after he got that pie in the face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, funny. Ha ha. But probably whoever it is that works for Hillary is protecting these guys. They do a pretty good job. Oh yeah. <laughs> they, they, fantastic. Yeah. But th there's no accountability. That's another reason why yeah. the Sam Bankman freed story is intriguing mm. right because now he's got like a clinton in point appointed judge who was somehow involved in some epstein case so this judge is already being tainted like with mm. the headlines so now we're all looking right the guy's out on bail 250 million dollars his parents home in palo alto is only oh, yeah, two, two million right so where's he get another 248 million well the judge said like we don't have to release the names of the co-signers on your bail because yeah, they're going to get harassed by the media so he's out on 250 million dollars bail so we're all looking to see like it, is this guy in the club or not mm -hmm. is someone going to be held accountable i mean i didn't have any money with ftx but imagine having your life savings with ftx right clowns like o'leary from the shark tank are saying like oh my money is safest in ftx right he's even getting dressed down by like people on cnbc yeah it'll so be interesting to see what happens yeah, to we, him we because when know. you steal and or simply lose a whole lot of money from a lot of very powerful people i mean probably not going to work out very well for you right and yet he's going to go free right with i mean if he does go free that's what we're all kind of watching and he's with impunity meanwhile someone like tom brady or larry david who spoke up on that behalf of the company is now going to have to face like legal repercussions because they're getting sued yeah what right. is what is brady's uh, involvement in all of that because i'm not quite clear on that have you, you haven't seen the ftx commercials like where mm -hmm. he was on like oh hey look and he's like you know, he's like he, he talking to like the bartender in boston and he like doesn't want him to come back to the patriots and stuff you know so it's no like, 
other other than when I'm watching football, I don't ever watch commercials. There's okay, so there's a there's a he was basically a spokesman for oh, FTX. Okay. So people are saying like, hey, you've, this is your reputation here. Like I invested my money based on your reputation, you know. And so I. But was he like a co-founder of some sort or something? I don't think so. I, I mean, think it's, it's one spokesman. thing to just be a spokesperson where you're paid to say good stuff about something. I don't understand how that qualifies him to be in any way responsible for that. I mean, it's a job. That's what the too many lawyers are going to like have to like adjudicate yeah. and figure it out. And it's the same with Matt Damon talking about all this investing stuff or whatever it is he's doing. You know, yeah, whatever he's, he's an actor that they fucking paid to say cool shit about it. Yeah. So this might be a you know precedent setting case if you can sue someone for just being a spokesman for a company. Right. Like, I don't know. I, to I mean, my it could be a good thing. Maybe then they'll get rid of stupid commercials. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I, I mean, I don't know the details of the loss. I just know, I just know that you guys on an episode were talking about Tom Brady and I was just like insult to injury. You know, oh, the yeah, guy's I think like, that's me and Dante. The guy's not having like the greatest year because now he's getting sued too <laughs> on top of everything else, right? Losing his wife, having a shitty season, uh, getting sued, lost a bunch of money. Yeah. Oh, there was actually, you know what? Now that you brought it up, there was a parallel that you guys, you guys really contrasted. You wanted to contrast the NFL with like the military, somehow the military got brought up in the same kind of uh, thing with it. And, and, and that, I, that was, that, I think that was Brady. Brady was contrasting something with, uh, oh, really? Cause yeah, I with the, the NFL Brady with episode the military. Yet. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of people were pissed off about how he, not only how he worded it, but the fact that he brought that up. It's like, really? Yeah. Being in an NFL training camp has nothing to do with being in the military. You fuck face. Okay. So the, this is where I will draw similarities between the NFL and the military, because how do they treat their veterans? Both treat them like shit, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If you're a U.S. veteran or if you're an NFL veteran, right? They treat the, the NFL treats its veterans like shit. And you can look at, because they all got this CTE, right? So they're all just like becoming like having all these issues, Parkinson's, whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they don't do, they don't even lift a hand. And in, in the Goodell, the commissioner's making what, 30 million a year for doing what? For having meetings? You yeah. can't give some of that money to healthcare for the veterans, the guys that like built the name up, built your league up. And they weren't even paying taxes, right? Wasn't the NFL not even paying taxes? Yeah, because <laughs> of what? Their religion? Yeah, it's probably a religious exemption. The way it's taken around the here. NFL yeah. religion? Yeah, it is. Yeah, for I the most part, people. People on Sunday as are glued to their screens. Yeah. Why if you can, if you can avoid paying taxes by being a Jedi priest, then yeah. sure. Why couldn't you uh, do it for being a Jedi or a, a NFL fan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, the, plus to join, you had to get the jab and <laughs> yeah, right? wear a mask well, everywhere. That's the whole thing. I mean, you see the look on these other players' Put faces. Inspire well, change okay. on the back of your car. Yeah. <laughs> wear special <laughs> colored cleats every day. Yeah. It's all, that's a sad thing. It's like, it's so woke, right? I wish I got into rugby, like your buddy on the the latest episode. Oh yeah, James. That that guy's got to tell you more about, because he just touched on it. I mean, he's got to tell you more about the rugby songs. Have you heard of like the rugby songs when they go out to the bar afterwards? The rugby songs are hysterical. Mm. Yeah, I I think he did touch on that, yeah. Yeah, my my one experience was, I never played rugby, but my one experience was, I was looking for my friend when I was visiting Cornell, and he was out, but his roommates were super cool, and they're like, hey, my, my, our other roommate just finished a rugby game, we're going the bar like want to go to the bar that's good it's great and i was just an observer of all these rugby players singing their songs you know like you, you've heard like the candy man can yeah. you know that song <laughs> it's like who can take an ice pig who can take an, you know got, put it in her ears put it in her ears ride her like a harley <laughs> as they fuck her in the rear the s and m man like this is what they're doing right and then and then and then what he forgot to tell you is if they mess up a lyric because everyone knows the lyrics to these songs right so they're all participating it's just this bizarre but it's so fantastic and it's like if they mess it up, they, they all start yelling on boot, boot, boot. And they take off. This guy took off this dirty ass like Nike high top, <laughs> filled it with beer oh and he chugged the whole thing. That's oh, the boot. Gross. That's the boot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that, so that's my like one limited peek into the rugby world. And it was fantastic. Wow. <laughs> I was like, when he talks about it, he just like glanced at it. I was like, man, I wish he told you more like details about like the bar parties afterwards. Cause this is the one that I saw. It was fantastic. If, well, hey, if he wants to come on again, <laughs> sure, yeah. But yeah, the NFL for me also is just that time suck, right? Yeah. Your, your, yeah. your podcast named Time Suck, it's like I'm spending three and a half hours like for this one thing where I find out later YouTube can summarize the game, all the big plays, all the scoring plays in like eight minutes. 
Plus, it's it's rigged. Oh, that's an interesting thought. So you think it's yeah. all fixed? It's completely rigged. And I mean, there's sometimes I of, sometimes I feel like that too a little bit. Videos and you think accounts all, and everything. You of, think all sports is rigged? Too? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any, Let's any explore that a little well, bit. And that's the thing. Like I, I just so I just found out yesterday that Peacock has all of WWF and WCW on it, right? Which we all know is absolutely fake, mm-hmm. right? With the exception of the fact that those people are athletes. Yeah. Those guys, they train every day. Oh. They're lifting weights. The people themselves, the wrestlers. Yes. Uh, fantastic, hard people. So, you know, I, I don't want to disrespect them. In and it's way. entertainment. People like it. Right. You know? it's but it is all staged. And it, it is, is all. Yeah, but, but I mean, you, you look at what these guys are doing. They're getting slammed on the mat. They're getting. I mean, sometimes, you know, what's supposed to be a fake punch, they miss and they really do get mm-hmm. hit. These guys are bleeding. Yeah. So, I mean, call it what you will. It's staged fighting and it is just for entertainment value. But. You know, it's fake, but it's not fake. Mm-hmm. So I will give it its due respect and diligence. But at least you know it. Yeah. Right. You know, when you see a guy who gets thrown towards the ropes, he hits the ropes, he bounces off, and then he runs all the way to the other side and bounces off those. And then he could stop at any time, but he keeps running all the way back to the other side. And he's just bouncing back and forth like four fucking times. You're like, dude, come on. Yeah. <laughs> now you're just showboating and you're really proving the point that this is fucking fake. Right. And it's funny as hell, but. You know, it's almost like breaking that fourth wall sometimes. But the thing is, can you can you uh, can you go to Vegas and place a, a wager on WWE? I don't I don't know. Can you? I don't think I don't think I don't you know. can because it, because it's blatantly scripted. The outcome yeah. scripted. Like yeah. I, I of course, like all these human beings, these bodies, these athletes, these actions, they're totally real. Right. But the outcome's already predetermined. Mm-hmm. Well, right? when you look at sometimes, what I'm getting at is when you look at when you when you're watching an NFL game. There have been times where you look at either a a call from a ref or just something like, you know, you know, this guy has made, I mean, every kick for the last six games. And now all of a sudden this one at the last minute, he's a professional. Yeah. (laughs) He's off by like 20 feet. Yeah. Like really? Yeah. How the fuck could you miss that? That was a layup, dude. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So the, but if the outcomes are scripted in professional and color sports, as you're um, saying, Jameson, then allowing them to be wagered on, allowing people's like actual money to be risked for something that's already predetermined, Mm -hmm. they wouldn't do that on something that's like scripted, right? See, I would, I would wager that college ball is far more real than the NFL. Yeah. I don't know that it pours over into college, but definitely because it, because I professional, I would, I would say that college ball is the audition for how good of an actor Mm -hmm. you are. Right. Mm -hmm. So to tie it back to also to, to Brady, the predetermined outcome and the, the, you, you said a kicker and you know, the, but in my experience, like you're, you're basically, I'm hearing you say, you see something that happens in the NFL and you wonder like, how in the world could that have happened? Mm-hmm. Like the, is there, and it makes you think like, is right. this fixed? Right. So the reason why me personally, even though as much as admiration and I would put Tom Brady as the top head on the, the Mount Rushmore of like, you know, hall of fame quarterbacks, right. Is I hate Tom Brady because of the stupid freaking tuck rule. Cause I'm a Raiders fan. So that play, <laughs> that playoff game in the snow in new England, when it was a blatant fumble mm-hmm. and the Raiders recovered it and the refs come in and they call it back and they said like, no, he was tucking the ball back to his body. Mm-hmm. So he can't can't fumble it when he tucks it. So any Raider fan worth their salt could not possibly like Tom Brady for that one play alone. Or was it his fault though? I mean, it was well, like, well, who well, fixed it? But, but it goes to your point that it's like fixed. Like why, why would you not let that's a fumble? Right. It's, it's kind of a gray area. Right. But I, I would, if it were me, I would look at that and I mean, Hey, I'm a Tom Brady fan. I, I don't care who knows it. It's I am. And I'm also a Raiders fan as well. Oh, but to look at that, if I being, uh, you know, completely objective as a ref, if I were to look at that, I would say tucking or not, if you do not have both hands on the ball and it's not at the body, then in that moment, you do not have full control of the ball. Therefore, whatever happens at the time during the tuck, not when it's tucked, if it gets knocked out of your fucking hand, it's a fumble, mm-hmm. like it or not, buddy, just take the hit and move on. Yeah. And that was a Super Bowl. The Raiders. I would have gave it to the Raiders. The Patriots. The Patriots won that Super Bowl. So the Raiders. That's just another. Anyways, why am I? So, why am I even talking about this? I feel like sucking but back. It, I'm sucked it, back into the comes, Matrix, James. But all it comes back to is because you feel bad about the Raiders. It's the bread and circus, right? It's yeah, the play that's that was been my run. Circus. It's it's the it's the play that's been run since probably pre-Roman times. It's mm. it's the way. It's a distraction. It's mm-hmm. a way to keep the masses entertained and distracted. It's a cell phone. 
Yep, it's a video game. It is. It's a uh, it's a titty bar. It's, right. uh, I mean, think about it. I mean, not only are you are you spending time watching football, which do whatever you like, right? Sure. If that's if that's your thing. Right. right. Freedom. Do you know? Do whatever you want. But think about how much time you spend if you're watching football all day on Sunday, Monday nights, Thursdays, you're playing fantasy football, how much time you're spending doing all of that and just talking about it, going to the bar. I mean, what it comes down to, right, is, is that you're you're controlled, right? You, you, you're not going to be a cog in the machine or, or right. you're not going to, you're not going to be, I don't want to see, you're going to be, be a, a virus. Machine. You're not, you're going to be a cog in the machine. You're not going to be like a virus yeah. in the matrix, right? You're not going to be the monkey wrench fucking shit up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Instead of, uh, you know, reading a book or exactly, learning right. how to do something new and improving yourself, be self-sufficient, right. right. Instead know. of tending your garden, you're right. going to be sitting in a bar drinking poison mm -hmm. with your buddies yep. and worrying about, you know, who's and getting all something. excited and using all of your, your frustration and energy, you know, yeah. energy on yelling at a TV for a football game. Right. It's when you yeah. should be yelling at these people that are robbing you blind every well, day. And, and what's funny to me and what I think about often, actually, when I'm watching football and, and I don't know why this thought comes into my head, but it, it does all the time. So, you, you know, you talk about the Romans. Well, what did they do back in those days? We had gladiators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had, we, you know, we had the Colosseum where they literally pitted people against each other with knives and, and against lions and shit. And it was kill or be killed. Right. People would sit around in the thousands and watch people literally fucking cut each other up. Mm -hmm. Well, in this day and age, we can't do that, right? We can't have people killing each other and shedding blood. So what do we do? We throw them a football and put them in a bunch of pads and we send them up and down a field. But still some people die during that. Oh, right? Well, yeah. And I mean, we collapse and yeah, cancel games. Damar sure. Hamlin almost did. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which I mean, that was a fucking freaky thing to begin with. Right? Right. It's funny because a friend of mine, when that happened, I mean, he was, he was all over our little text chat that we have and he's, you know, Oh, the Fauci jab, the Fauci jab. Yeah. His heart fucking stopped because he got the blah, 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 blah. And we're all like, eh, I don't know about that. I mean, definitely not ruling it out, but I mean, could it, knowing, you know, all the stuff that's coming out about it now and, uh, you know, causing, causing heart defects and lung problems and, uh, uh blood clots and everything else, I'm not going to rule out that it could have played a factor in it. Is it the root cause? I don't think so. They're, they're saying that it was, uh, what is that? Um, commodio, commodio cordis. cordis. Right. Yeah. And, and when you, when you take a shot to the chest at the exact moment where what is it the the electrical pulse to reset the sinus wave or whatever in the heart is firing and you literally have like it's what two three milliseconds window right and 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 for commodio cordis the demographic is usually much younger it's like a teenager right. it's like the incidences of it happening in football are like I don't know. You can probably count on one hand, which and is, which is odd to me because when you look at a lot of the hits that guys have taken over the years in football, I mean, it's, but often it's they're not amazing. directly to the sternum, right? Cause right. they have like the shoulder pads that come down and protect the sternum. That's so there's true. One, there's one actual additional barrier, right? Right. And thirdly, in commodio cordis, it's a dysrhythmia, right? That's initiated by blunt force. And that once the dysrhythmia is restored to a normal sinus rhythm, which is like one AED shock, boom, mm -hmm. back in rhythm, right. you're restored, you're normal. This guy had to be resuscitated twice. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That, that's not normal for that. Yeah. So, the, but the, th but the, the more important thing is, and you're setting your friend aside is the fact that most people don't even want the question asked. Mm. Like, you know, let's say I just asked the question like, oh, that's unusual. I've been watching football like my whole life. I've never seen a game stopped or canceled. I've never seen a, a, someone that do CPR. Like, is there a chance that, you know, he had to get vaccinated to play on the team? How dare you ask mm -hmm. that question? Mm -hmm. Where are yeah, you going, right. you conspiracy theorists? How dare you ask that question? It's like, well, you just asked me that question to go get a burger at McDonald's. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, it, that, that's the only time it's important <laughs> is, to, yeah. is to ask it if I want fast food, but I can't ask it when a guy collapses on the field, has to be resuscitated and brought to a hospital and a game canceled. I can't ask it then. Yeah, I'd like to get a Big Mac and fries. Well, do you have your vaccine? Yeah, exactly. How dare you ask me yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Have well, you, you can get one booster? right here. We've got a, exactly. we've got a little booth for you. Yeah, <laughs> get that. Take care <laughs> of the McDonald's serve right up. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you a free Big Mac if you get the jab. Yeah, yeah. so it's just, <laughs> but to, it's like if you ask a question, like, you know, it's like, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist I'll, I'll automatically. What? I can't ask questions anymore. Right. I just have to accept it. Yeah. Right? This is the whole, this is the other piece of it too. Do what we say or else. Me is the whole censorship thing is it is the fact that you can't ask questions and, and you're censored. Everything is censored for our benefit. And, 
If it's not for our benefit. I don't, I don't, as a free human being, I don't have the ability to make my own decision to be able to s- look at all the facts on both sides and be able to make a decision. No, right. it has to be, it has, to, we're doing this for your protection. We had to put these disclaimers on there and everything. And yeah, well, because more and more the proverbial, they, they don't want us to think for ourselves right. and think freely and make decisions on our own. Well, the best slave is the one that is like deluded themselves into thinking they're free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're going to work harder now. Yeah. Right? You're really free. You're, you saw that uh, um, documentary, I presume, like the Monopoly, Who Owns the World? So mm-hmm. you go to, you go to, I didn't see that one. You, get, uh, you might like it. So you go to the, uh, you go to the gas station, you're like filling up with gas, you go in to get a drink. You're like, oh, Coke versus Pepsi. Mm-hmm. Here we go. First, first rivalry, Coke versus Pepsi. I'm a Coke guy. I've always been a Coke guy, right? Get the Coke guy. Come to find out, right? Who owns Coke? Same people that own Pepsi, mm-hmm. Vanguard, and BlackRock. <laughs> for they, real? They own the, the freaking world. Like, yeah. For real. Yeah. So, this so the Koch brothers this, own Pepsi, too? This whole thing that you think is like, us, and, and you don't think that represents politics? Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Democrat, Republican. Oh, yeah. They're so different. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> That's why some people have already started calling them uniparty. Right? How, mm. how, how exactly different are they? They both want to send our money to Ukraine, getting back to that subject, right? Because they're both getting it back nice and clean. Right. So it's like there's yeah. a, you think there's a difference, right? So it's it's just part of the bread and circuses. It's just not ath- athletes. The reason why I like the NFL, the reason why I like Major League Baseball or we're watching these things, NHL, is because what I'm actually watching is kind of like an amazing thing what another human being can do mm-hmm. like jump like freaking so high yeah. oh, and like oh, catch yeah. a ball yeah, or yeah, like yeah. you know run so fast like you right. know so so i'm in, enthralled by like the the physical ability right. of fellow human beings like that's a yeah, fellow human right. being i can't do that but look i can watch that but yeah absolutely it's a total circus yeah watching uh, dk metcalf or tyler lockett just jump you know like six feet in the air or more and just reach out and makes you know an amazing catch you're like, fuck, I wish I could do that. That is amazing. Yeah. And it's just that alone is kind of worth it. But the, I the sportsmanship apps aspect of it and the athleticism, I mean, yeah. really, I mean, that's, that's mostly what I care about, to be honest with you. Right. And the dedication, the discipline, everything that yeah. goes into being an athlete right. of that caliber. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's, so that is one way to look at it is to watch, you know, these, these, uh, you know, to watch these men who do have that discipline to, to eat right every day and to work out every day and to keep themselves so in tune and Mm -hmm. take care of themselves to be able to do what they do and and, you know on on top of the entertainment value of watching these gladiators go out and smash each other up and score Mm -hmm. i mean i mean there's so many things about it to love but you think about it too is and this is part of the part of the problem is is that they invest so much time and energy and and discipline and everything into it for years and years and years right and then you get to that level and it's like we might ask you to drop the ball one time or Mm. we might ask you to you know yeah. Miss that tackle. But we might ask you to throw a fight in the third round. Right. You know, <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, that was it. That was and it. if you don't, there's the door. Yeah. Right. We'll get somebody else here in two seconds. that will take your spot. Yeah. Well, that was a major watershed moment for me because I deluded myself into thinking like, okay, when it comes to the government, even these judges, these people in black robes who I've long believed are going to be impartial are going to interpret the law as the law and make a ruling based on like what they consider justice being their foundational, you know, moral principle, like that's not happening. But if I go to the sports world, right, I can at least think these guys in the black and white stripes are doing that, right? They're doing to the best of their ability, like following the rules of the game, making these judgment and determinations based on what is fair and just according to the the rules of the sport. Mm -hmm. Well, when that guy... I think his name's like Tim Donahue or something. I can't remember. The basketball referee who got basically busted, like sent to jail, I think, for like basically point shaving equivalent of like a referee. I'm like, that's it. Mm-hmm. Like now everything's fixed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. there's nobody that's subjective. Right. There's no objectivity in the world. Right. And it's like once objectivity has gone, then you're going back to what we talked about before we started, which is like this whole world is a subjective individual experience of consciousness right so no one there's no like uniform gold standard center like point zero right yeah and and, i mean everything really is open to suggestion and interpretation because it is all how everything is perceived but Mm -hmm. you you look at uh you know you look at judges overturning roe v wade 
or any other law that has been overturned, right? So to say that, well, this law is in the books and this is how it is, well, that could be changed, right? And it's dependent on any other judge's interpretation of the law and what they feel it should be. Because the number one thing that I always say that anything comes down to that is, I mean, it's, yeah, you could say it's kind of a fundamental problem is that everything that we do depends on how we feel about it. Often, even though we try to be objective, so often do we fail and things are determined by how whoever is making the judgment at that time feels about something when that may, you know, their, their judgment may not necessarily coincide with what actually is best for the people. Mm Mm-hmm. And that goes all the way up the ladder. That goes not only from our system of justice, but all the way up through our government. Right. Best for what people? Like right. The, you've the got population or like you, the select few that are in the club. Right. In, in my point of view, you've got greed, which is the number one problem. Mm-hmm. And, and, and unfortunately, it's rampant because I've talked about this before. It goes back to our you know need for survival because greed is part of that. Why do we want more than we need? Because we're always looking for that way that we can survive and not have to worry about survival. We want to be comfortable. We constantly seek comfort so that we don't have to worry about going out with a spear and you know hunting for our dinner every day. Right. We're, we're constantly trying to fight against our nature, which is, which is that. So greed is in every single one of us. And there's, there's some people that are better at handling it than others are obviously right it's this whole ingrained thing where i mean we we are definitely not living as our ancestors did in the fact that you you were part of a tribe right and right. you grew up as a child and you learned how to do the things that you do when you're an adult and when you become an elder you're taken care of right you're respected you're taken care of and there's no worry about am i going to have enough money in my retirement it's like my tribe is going to take care of me and just knowing that, I mean, I think people think of like things like social security and stuff like that. That's what that was intended to do. But, but, but really there's not that connection and having that, that, that transition into to elderhood and having the rest of your tribe taking care of you. Now where, where I, I feel like if we're going to leverage technology and we have a, a perfect opportunity right now to where if we have this technology and we leverage it in the right way, we don't need government. Because everything, think about all the laws and things like that are created is typically because somebody wronged somebody else, right? And we don't want that to happen again. So we're going to create some kind of a law around it. Well, think about like Yelp, for instance. It's like, I'm not going to do business with this business down the street because they have terrible reviews. Or I'm not going to do business with Joe because he's got a profile. People have said that he swindled them or whatever. It's like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do business with them. So this is the opportunity to, to really create an, a, an ability for, for people to, to, to see who they should conduct business with and what businesses they should do. You know, for, for whatever reason, it's like we know that Amazon's bad, but we still do business with them, right? Well, it's they kind of have a monopoly. Right. Yeah. So it's like until there's like real competition. You know, the, the last chapter. It's, it's just going to take, it's going to take, I guess to put a, to put a pin on that, it's, it's, it's just going to take discipline and it's going to take um, drive and desire if that's what we want, rather than continuing to, to send our rights and responsibilities to a third party, but uh, that continue that, that takes advantage and, and actually does, does the direct opposite of what we intend. But, ob, but, uh, AI won't obviate the need for government or government is controlling the AI. It'll just be an extension of it. Mm-hmm. It'll just be like, we're not going to subject 87,000 armed IRS agents to go knock on doors to collect money. We'll just send the robots. And, and that's why I don't even think that right. and that's again, why it's like, okay, t- give me another, give me a, a good example of when we would ever need AI, because I feel like at this point, and I think maybe AI is involved in a little bit of the technology that we use today from like social, um, media and things like that. But I, I, I don't know where we would need, we need to go beyond it this. It goes what, back to Dave's point of comfort. Yeah. We need AI for like the comfort, right? It takes me. Right. I, the, here's the, okay. I, I can, need a new, I, new shiny object. So I, somebody's going to go create that with AI, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, and right. that's how I'm going to. Well, it's, they've done studies that show that it's actually affecting human brains, right? So the people mm-hmm. that take the, the selfies, the photos of every single thing they see in every single day, their memories are actually worse mm-hmm. because they don't have to, me- they, they're outsourcing their memory. To right. The phone, right. Mm-hmm. So now they don't have to remember anything. They 
can just look it up. Like think of who, whose phone numbers you know off the top of your head. I used all, right. all, all my childhood I know the, friends. All my childhood that's friends, it. right? Exactly. Yeah, I remember it. my phone number when I was a kid. I, I remember, remember my, my phone number when I was a kid, and I remember my wife's phone number, and that is it. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember either of you guys' phone no. number, but yet I can uh-huh. call you. Huh. Because I've outsourced even that ability. All I had to do is right. open my phone and right. you yeah. know push JJ, and there it is. So here's the thing. So now we've cre- at, we've biologically created space for more memory by outsourcing a lot of it to this digital device that's in our pockets. What are we putting in? Yeah. What Absolutely we pu- nothing. We're not using it. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's so sad, isn't it? That's yeah, just sad. Very sad. And and memory. I mean. It, I think, I mean, I'm not a fucking doctor or a researcher, so I mean, I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass, but I think about it as kind of like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So since we're not using it, is that part of the problem? Why we're so fucking stupid? Right. Well, so why they can continue to, like you said at uh, the big short, repeat things all over again. Oh yeah. And we're just going to forget. Right. Yeah. It's like how many people we've forgotten that have like, you know, screwed up. It's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It gives me more time to, to, you know, spend on the bullshit, like the more negative comments, the more watching sports, the more whatever, right. you know, right. That I'm going to fill my, my brain and my time with rather than educating yourself. Yeah. Out, because we know that everything that we've been educated with for is uh, oh, the lies. The, is never is, 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 I mean, we've been, we've been programmed and, and until you realize that you're going to have to do your own education. Right. And that is very, very uncomfortable. Yeah. Very uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. And if you're someone that's attracted to comfort, you're not going to want to do it. Yep. You'd rather just get on, post a picture of your dinner, see how many people like hit the, you know, mm-hmm. heart button. Give you the dopamine get your, get hit. Get your dopamine hit and just yeah. like, yeah, and then I'm going to eat my dinner. This is, life is great. You're not going to like go down any rabbit holes. Mm-mm. You're going to just see the rabbit. Oh, isn't that cute? Mm-hmm. Let him go down the hole by himself and be like, I'm, we're in just this garden of Eden here. Things are great. Well, and, and going back to what you were talking about, Jameson, about, uh, the tribe, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and looking at money again. Right. So we're in this, we find ourselves in this place now where we don't ha- really have tribes anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, the closest tribe that you have is your closest friends and your immediate family and, you know, and stuff like that. But we're not really a community anymore. Right. Because we don't rely on each other for anything. No, nope. We all have nope. our our money, our financial portion of our lives. And, you know, whatever you make is what you make. And, you know, you, most of us in some way or another can support ourselves, but because we're not having to go out and hunt, because we're not having to go out and pick berries or, uh, you know, scrape bark off of trees to make rope, to tie a hut together and all Mm -hmm. that crap. I mean, yeah, there, there is no tribe anymore. It's everybody against everybody. And so I, I feel that that drives the greed even farther. Right. Well, think about it is because, I mean, I'm not necessarily saying that we even need to go back to those times where, right. Cause it was hard times. Right. right. And uh, I believe we were more connected to the earth. And I think any time you can have those experiences, but the fact that, uh, we're duplicating so many efforts. It's like, if we were a tribe, like, it's like even for like a neighborhood, it's like, we all each have our own lawnmower. We all each have our own right. car. We each have our own. You know, this, it's, once it's, again. It's, it's exactly. It just, it's, it's like, creating all these things and, 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 and all of this, um, effort and time against, you know, things we shouldn't have to do. Well, one of the things we've been brainwashed to the nth degree, and that's really sad is that humans are really in competition rather than collaboration. Yeah, exactly. So, so if we were tribal still, like we would see each other as an opportunity to collaborate, right? So one of the things I like about hanging out with you guys is like, we're kind of collaborating, just talking. Like we, sometimes we talk about our personal lives. We're collaborating. Like, what do you, you know, we're both, we're both, we're all married and we have kids. So it's like, you know, let's collaborate some ideas like that right. kind of help each other. Yeah. We're not like competing each other. Like, Hey, look at my daughter. Like she yeah. got an A on this test or like, right. we're not competing. Like, look at how great I am. Like we're not, that's not the point. But, we've, but we've all taken the opportunity to form our own little tribe of, you know, guys that, that collaborate and help each other and exchange information, you know, when we need it and stuff like that. I mean, which is, I mean, it's essentially 
to some degree bringing back that that bartering and that uh you know uh just connection the freedom yeah. of exchange you know? yeah. yeah but but it's also like you know when you see someone else like succeeding it's like okay what's my reaction am i competing with this person or am i like happy and like collaborating with this person like oh one of the guys that we know that was on a podcast like he's got a boat and you know i'm not on social media but i hear like he's got all these parties on his boat and you know all this stuff and so like what what's my initial reaction like oh i'm jealous or i'm envious i'm in competition with them like what i gotta get a boat it's like hold on a second you hate boats mm-hmm. like you're not a boat person like what, what, what all of a sudden you're in competition right. with like this, this this ghost this like imaginary right. straw man right right so it's like if mm, straw and, man and, and so and so that's why i think for me personally especially when you have to be married for a while and my wife doesn't always understand this when we do something that's collaborating like husband and wife have this goal whatever it's something simple like you know what the house is disorganized we need to like organize this section of the house and we get to it after the time period's up i feel like the one of the highest expressions of love without mm-hmm. even exchanging any words like we human beings were meant for collaboration right, right. but we've been programmed to think that we're in competition yep. that those of us who have the most toys is going to win mm-hmm. well, I got news for you you ain't bringing the toys right. wherever you're going exactly. once you die right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> how many times have we heard that yep yeah you don't get to take it with you when you die yeah unfortunately ex- exactly you can't right. and we've it. been put in this position too um, t- t- going back to the tribe thing is is, is that in order to to keep up and you know pay our taxes and and meet our demands and everything that's required of us based on the situation that we're in it's like we're we have to put our kids in daycare mm-hmm. we have to put our elders in homes you know to where we we are even more separated because of this thing that we're chasing it's like everything that we need is here and, and it's like why do we have to keep striving right for for more if it just at the end of the day takes us away from our, our our ideals of of having that connection in that family and community and because both what you said is like to Dave's point comfort and comfort we're now discovering through this conversation is higher in priority to most humans than connection mm-hmm. we'd rather be comfortable we'd rather be able to go about our own day than to have to change either our babies or our grandmother's diaper mm-hmm. right because that inconveniences us because we would rather be comfortable we'd rather be in that little portable chair right mm-hmm. and happy and obese playing digital golf floating around the wally world than we would actually like, you know, walking like nine holes uphill, like 600 pounds running around in our little floating chair, laid back, just staring at a screen. That's the extreme comfort, right? Yeah. They seem comfortable. They don't have have to chew, right? They just had shakes. Oh yeah. That, that, that whole part of that movie was so profound to me when that first came out. The fact that these people are all just big fat slobs laying in these chairs. They don't even look at each other. Mm -hmm. Like they, they just have basically an iPad hung over their head. And so when they want to talk, they don't even turn their head. They're right next to each other. They're six inches away, but instead they're staring at each other through a screen. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, how real is that today? That's insane. It wasn't it the, the, that they had to leave earth cause they're all in these spaceships now. Right. Yeah. yeah. That are over the earth and cause the earth has just, is this, full of garbage. Yeah. Right? It's full of garbage. That's what Wally is. And we destroyed factor. all the natural resources and everything else. And so uh, all the spaceships are owned by, by and large, which is essentially Costco and Walmart. Mm-hmm. At some point, those two will probably merge and become, you know, cost smart and, Right. I know for the They'll most, build the spaceships with SpaceX and right. <laughs> I know for, I know for the most part it's it's uh it's maybe got an environmental slant and it's probably going down the path of climate change but for the purposes of this discussion it's really about for me it's a comfort like that that world that they created is all about like these human beings being comfort to the yeah. point where they're, they're they're minimizing the effect of like physical you know exertion Mm-hmm. Like they don't even exert them. They don't even stand up. Like it's, right. it's like a big deal. Like they're, they haven't stood up in generations and gotten out of the chairs. Yeah. Right? And that's the thing is, is uh, I always talk to my wife about this too, is, is like I, if people would, would just take five seconds and, and I'm, and I'm guilty of it too, but just think about the, the way that you feel about a certain uh, issue or do I really need this comfort before making that purchase or whatever? It's like, I, I, I mean, I just think off the top of my head. I, I mean, I, I love my bed. I love a hot shower. Uh, but other than that, I mean, if you had things that were local, you know, you could get by on a bike, you, you know, walking, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that we don't necessarily uh, need to have. But, but again, I feel like it's this push for AI, this constant 
of, of trying to create something new, something shiny. It, it just kind of pulls us out of this shit that we're in that we've created of that. I've got to work 40 hours a week. I got to pay my taxes. I got to pay my bills instead of like really ingraining ourselves and enjoying this realm that, that was created. Enjoying the ride. The building yeah, says, right. you're, not, you're not enjoying the ride. Mm-mm. You know, it's just a ride. Yeah. Go out and enjoy it. What's going to happen to you? Right. You, you all, the ride ends at the same spot for everyone. Right. You don't know where it, when or where it ends. And but. this is what I need to remind myself too, is when I go into work, it's just like, there is no excuse why I should ever be stressed out. It's like, if this job is going to stress me out and make me not feel good, then what the hell am I doing? Yeah. You're, you're right. harming you're, you know, that's, yeah. that's self harm. Yeah. Right? It is because, completely yeah, self harm because, because the, the, the employers don't care, Mm-mm. right? Because as soon as you like, die of a stroke they're being like next yeah and they'll exactly. just fill your, they'll fill your chair the next day right maybe they'll have a moment of silence or a cake or some <laughs> or some zoom call to talk about you Dude. but it's but it's like you're just basically a flesh version of ai right now that hits home for me so so much i mean it, it, i'm working on my wife a little bit and she's she's in agreement it's like let's just let's, let's go like what the hell it's an adventure man well let's uh you know, we first said maybe buy, but mm-hmm. like, let's, or maybe we can just go work at like some, you know, a uh, s- small beach town that has like a bar, restaurant, hotel, cool. whatever, you know, yeah. and just like, yeah, I'll just, just say fuck it. And, fuck it. Yeah. You know, get half price pina coladas. We're going to give a shit for like exactly. cleaning some guy's surfboard. Exactly. We'll stack your surfboard, half price pina coladas. What else coladas do I need that. other than that, man? You know, yeah. you're grounding all the time. You're barefoot yeah. on the beach, connecting to the earth. Getting plenty of vitamin D yeah. through the sun. Some of, some of the happiest food, people that you food. ever meet are people that have just put away all of that stuff. Yeah. And, and they're only working for what they need, not mm-hmm. for what they want. Mm-hmm. And they don't want for much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just talking about to this with the therapist uh, yesterday, and uh, he was saying, and these studies have proven that you can you reach a certain amount of annual income, and then it's like diminishing returns. Yeah, yeah. right. Because if greed then starts taking over, and you see the going, that your happiness level or life fulfillment satisfaction level does not change, or it goes down. Right. Because now you're so obsessed with like you know keeping up with the Joneses that that's your full time preoccupation that you're not even like you know, smelling the roses, going outside, enjoying yeah. anything outside of life other than like winning. You feel like you have right. to win. Right. Yeah. And the only, the only thing I would say to that is to have a good work ethic. So anything that you are going to do, whether you like it or you don't like it, if you're in it, put in your 110% as long as you're there. So let me ask you, where does good work ethic come from? Because what's happened to the generations behind us and where, cause I've heard stories you would know better than me, like that, the work ethic's not there. Well, I mean, being somebody who hires people, yeah, the work ethic I don't feel is there. I I tend to I tend to try and hire um, veterans mm-hmm. because I mean a lot of them, you know, just just going through boot camp and being in the service alone. I mean, most if not all of them, they have a very strong work ethic. You know, mm-hmm. they've been a part of a team, a part of something bigger than themselves, and they understand what it is to just be in the shit and in the suck and put in everything you got to put in and be a part of a team. I mean, they are, they are very fascinating people to me and they're typically from what I find just hard workers and they know how to get shit done. It's very rare that I meet one that, that doesn't, you know, but I mean, a lot of, a lot of younger folks in their twenties shit in their early thirties anymore that, that I come across they, their work histories are garbage. Mm-hmm. You know, they've, they've been through so many different jobs. Um, you look at their, at their work record and it's, you know, two months here, six months there, which, which, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it, it depends on the person. So, I mean, if, if you're the kind of person who likes to move around a lot and it's okay to not know what you want to do, it, it really is, you know, and, and I tell my kid this too, you're young, you have plenty of time right now to just float around and try different things. If you don't already know what you want to do with the rest of your life and you're not, you're not going to go to college and make a career out of it, then yeah, by all means do that. But when you finally start finding like an area of something that interests you, like say hospitality or, or service or something like that then you should probably stick to that area, start working at restaurants and maybe hotels or something, you know, somewhere in that area so that 
even though you're jumping around, you're gaining experience in that area, that industry of service or hospitality. Right. You're not just jumping from a place that makes, uh, you know, buttons for computers and then going to a bar gig and then going over to, you know, some place that manufactures, you know, toy trains or something like, you know, find something that you're interested in and then start stick to that area of jobs until you find what you really want to do for the rest of your life. It sounds like to me, you're saying like, it's okay to like change ladders. Just don't stay on the same rung. It, it's okay to change ladders. And sometimes you have to move from one ladder to another l- laterally instead of going up in order to get to go up. But do you have to constantly go up? No, you don't. If you can live comfortably on that rung, then you should stop worrying about all the other people that are climbing higher than you Mm -hmm. and just stay where you're at. As long as you can afford the lifestyle that you want and, and be comfortable where you're at. Right. But you should still always be challenging yourself to do other things. Climbing the ladder doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to mean competing with the Joneses, but personal improvement and constantly right. finding ways to improve yourself and challenge yourself. That's, so that's, what, that's I was what it should be about. That's what I was going to ask you guys next. Like, do you think that self-improvement is a human need? I believe it is. I, I think so too. Yeah. And, and just to, on, on your point that I think that again, if we've been programmed to, you go to high school and then now you got to choose a curriculum or a, or a major when you go to college and then you're kind of like locked in uh, unless, right. unless you've gotten some, yes. you know, different types of experience to where you can pivot to something else if you need to. Um, but, it, uh, again, it comes to, and I was telling my wife this the other day, it's like, okay, so you, and, and when we talked, it's like, I don't plan on retiring really, it's, you know, the, right. the, the word of retiring. It's like, you know, I got to, I want to stay busy. I want to continue the self-improvement. I want to continue yeah, to have these experiences that, yeah. and, 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 and hopefully, you know, be able to generate income for myself for as long as possible. Right. Yeah. Um, but we have this whole mentality in our society of where we just got to kill ourselves until we get to retirement age. And then we, we don't want to do anything else. You know, we want to, we yeah. want to live the, you know, play golf if we can travel, whatever, but that goes to the underlying why, right? So I saw this all the time. So in high school, it's like, okay, this guy wants to get into the best college. We're like, why? Well, because once I get in the best college, I get like the best diploma, then I can get like the best job. Well, like why? But what is the best and then, job? And then I get the best job and I make the most money because then I can retire. Yeah. Like, well, well, why? Yeah. Like, well, what, what is it that you want to do in it's retirement like that you're, that you're, that you're yeah. waiting for 60 years to do yeah. that you can't do like right now? Yeah. When I just, and just going back real quick, just to clarify. So, so people that jump around jobs and what I was, what I was getting at with that is mm-hmm. it's okay to be a job jumper. As long as you are jumping jobs within a certain field, once you've, you know, find out early when you're younger, what it is you're interested in and what you want to do, and then jump jobs in that field so that you can hone that, you know, don't just jump around all over the place, find out what you are interested in jump around in that area. So people that come to me that have these long employment histories of just this place and that place and all over the map, if they're everywhere, if they are all over the place and they're in their thirties, forties, then that's a red flag to me. Yeah. That, that says this person doesn't stick around long. They have no idea what the fuck they're going to do. If I take the time and effort and spend the company's money to do background checks and train them and waste my time training them because I'm the one who's going to have to do it, which means I don't get to do my job. Right. And it, that's more stress on turnovers me. expensive. Yeah. 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 Turnover is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm probably not going to put in the effort in that person unless it's a really good interview. Mm-hmm. If this person is extremely personable and you know, uh, I'm asking them certain questions and they're answering them and they have a great fucking attitude and they just, they show up, and present a clean, confident persona to me that says, yeah, you know, I'm going to try not to let you down. I'm not making any promises, but I'm going to try my best. Then, okay, I might give them a shot. But somebody who comes to me that has, you know, a, a speckled employment history within the area of kind of what I'm looking for, that's what I'm going to look at more. I'm going to, I'm going to say, okay, yeah. And, and especially with a good interview, 
that's when I'm going to call references and I'm going to say, okay, well, I can see this person's been around a lot and they haven't been in one job for a long period of time, but tell me about this person. Mm -hmm. You know, what, how did they work for you? And if I get, you know, a whole bunch of people that are like, oh yeah, he didn't stick around long, but when he was here, he busted his ass. Mm -hmm. He did everything we asked of him and blah, blah, blah. And you know, he just, uh, he's just seems like he's trying to find his place. I'm probably going to give that person a shot and I'm going to be more apt to not necessarily cater to them, but to try and focus on what their abilities are. I'm going to look at how they fit in my team. And I'm, I'm not going to try and just pigeonhole them into this one position that I need. I might hire them for that position because I need to fill it, but I'm going to talk to this person and I'm going to find out what it is they like to do and what it is I could possibly move them around in our company to do later that will keep them employed and keep them with us and not only make them more valuable to themselves, but to this company and, and retain them. And that, that's what I look for. And I think is of being as transparent as possible to it as, as an employer, because you know, you're taking a chance on this person right. and just being aware of the things that might turn them off or that might right. be a problem for them. Like I feel like with, with my most recent job, I didn't quite know what I was getting into. Mm-hmm. And so there's a little bit of a sore spot for me as yeah. far as like, you guys weren't totally transparent on exactly how this would work. Right. And, and so I think that's a lot of the reason why we do see a lot of turnover now too, because, because businesses are, 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 are clawing to get talent and they're doing whatever they can just to bring them on board. Maybe I won't mention that aspect of the job yeah. until they come on board. See, that's where I'm totally different. I don't, I don't agree with that. And I, mm-hmm. I don't, I always hated when that happened to me and I don't like doing it to other people. Yeah. So anymore these days, I'm almost literally trying to talk people out of this job. Mm-hmm. I am giving them 100% upfront. Hey, you know what? This job you're playing for, it's not fucking fun. Here's all the things that it requires. Here's what I need from you. And I give them my expectations right up front. And I say, look, I'm not saying that you couldn't move around. If you, if you decide, you know, a a ways down the road that you would rather go be a, a welder or, you know, do something else within the company. Cool we will find a way to get you trained up and possibly make that happen. I'm not making promises, but I'm not going to hold anybody back because it's happened to me before and I don't like it. So I'm going to give you the opportunity. As long as you give me your 100%, you show up every day on time and you bust your ass for me and you stay in your position for at least a year, then this is what I'm going to do for you. Because you know that as an employer, you need to have those carrots out there to retain them. Right. Otherwise, they're going to be well. I'm just going to go over here if I don't have if I don't have any mobility right. in this organization. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm completely upfront with everybody, and I literally try to talk them out of taking the job because I find it actually retains people better. You know, because the people who upfront, if I'm like, yeah, it's a tough job. It you're, you know, especially with the, uh, the outdoor jobs, like you're rain, snow or shine. It could be 30 below. You're outside doing this work and it's not easy. So do you want the job or don't you? Right. And, yeah. and most of the time anymore, now that I started doing that, they're like, yeah, you know, this really isn't for me. And I'm like, okay, I can respect that. Thanks yeah. for not wasting my time and yours, Yep. you know? And, and I've had a, I think I had a guy once who came, did an interview with me and then he interviewed with, uh, somebody else who they're not necessarily a competitor, but, Um, I think he told them that he had applied for us and they called and asked what we thought of him, you know, and I was like, look, this guy was honest with me. Like, he seems like a good dude. He just didn't want to take the job we were offering because of this stuff. And I respect that he was honest with me and upfront about it. And they were like, "Hmm, okay, I think they did hire him. Mm. So why is honesty so hard? Right. Why is it so fucking hard? And transparency, honesty and transparency. Why is it so hard for him? I mean, I confess I've, that's been a major issue in my my primary relationship, my marriage, is that I haven't been the most honest person. Meanwhile, my wife values honesty above everything else. So because, why is it so hard? Because sometimes being honest will not net you the outcome that you want. Mm. You're worried about the repercussions. Yep. Maybe there's shame, mm-hmm. guilt around certain things that, that you've done. That Honesty you know. requires uh, no dependence on outcome. That's why it's difficult. Yeah. And it seems like there's going to be some accountability involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard for people to reflect and look at themselves and say, man, I fucked up. Mm-hmm. So as long as you can hold yourself accountable and you not worry about what's going to happen, it's very easy to be honest. And honesty, no matter what, is the best policy because nine times out of 10, it's going to work out a hell of a lot better for you than uh, 
lying and then having to keep up with that lie with another lie and then another lie right. and another lie That's and then trying to remember all the lies you told. Yeah. And having guilt I think I saw a Three's Company those. episode about this. <laughs> <laughs> I got to use it. Yeah. How, how's our time down? Yeah, we're, we're about out of time, but uh, well, I know you guys got stuff to do. Uh, yeah. So real quick, uh, recap, three great movies that everybody, I in my opinion, should watch would be They Live and WALL-E and mm-hmm. uh, 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 what, what was the other one that we were talking about? Idiocracy. Idiocracy, Idiocracy for sure. Yeah, yep. I haven't seen that. Uh, any good books you guys want to mention that people should read? Democracy, The God That Failed by Hans Hermann Hoppe. If you can't read the whole thing, it's not long, about less than 300 pages but it's very dense political philosophy you can just read the last chapter chapter 13 chapter 13 what about you jamie uh i mean one of the books that got me started on this whole thing was a creature from jekyll island oh yeah mm-hmm. j so, edward griffin mm-hmm. just yeah, about how the fed came to be and and uh what uh, what the mess that it's created uh, how the monster came mm-hmm. 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 or in the fed by ron paul yes <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Thanks, man. We'll, uh, yeah. we'll wrap this up and let you guys get out of here and back to your grinds and lives. All right. Thanks for Thanks, having Dave. me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming over, guys. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Great yeah. fun. Yeah. This uh, multi person podcasting <laughs> stuff. I could get used to this. You got a new thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll definitely have to do it a lot more often. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, dude. Awesome. Thanks again, guys. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit me up if you have anything you want to contribute with on uh, our email address, which is gigpodshow at gmail dot com. You can also find us on Facebook, Guys in a Garage Podcast. Thanks again, everybody, and keep on grinding. Have a good one.